Welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, your best source for the newest Atari games, and we deliver on that promise tonight. We do. We have an exclusive new build of Micro Vaders yeah. for the Lynx from Songbird. And not only that, we also will be talking to Carl Forehand from awesome. Songbird, <laughs> the cute. developer of the game and the person behind Songbird Production. So we're very excited tonight. Yes. Um, so I are love the cats. the cats are very excited as He's always. Crazy right now. <laughs> <laughs> I love shooters and this one's a good one. Yes. So I uh, can't wait. Um, so, but before we get to that, we're going to say thank you to all the Twitch subscribers who help support the show to bring you such such games and mm -hmm. guests like this. Uh, Al Nefer, Andre, Atari, Armscar, Coder, Atari 800, XL, Rose, Atari 1974, Atari Age, Blipsqueak, BR Polka, Bruno Stag, Chelston, Mel, Charles, Wheel and Chitlala, Cyrano Rebo, Dan FC, Daryl 1970, Dr. Moo, Cows, Gamma Dev, Gisberto, Rondinella, Great Offender Gets, Kev, JG, KS, PSX, Johnny WC, Carl G, Caracat, Crocker 2600, Veltiver, Landry, Express, Mandy Sipping, T Mark, Yana, Spark, Space, Sigma, Atari, McMuse, Mike Sol, McTown, Miss Man, Miss. Fix, Muddy Funster, Neil Media, Nostalgic, Pseudographics, Coog, Aranchowitz, Render Ghost, Repentless, VG, Reventuli, Six Sweets, Mitty B, Spice, Rest, Spinley, S. Ramirez, D Train, Tiki Danke, Tiki Fat, Tiki. Tifos, TM Events, Trek, MD, Tweeny, Vexorex, VVG Double Down, and X Ken X. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. For supporting the show. Someday I'm going to go in there. I'm going to randomly assort them. And you're going to pull that up on the screen I'll and be, be like, bah. <laughs> yeah, I do 10 minutes before the show. Usually when you're not here. <laughs> yes. So good luck with that. Alphabetical. Yeah. yeah. It is alphabetical. Or I'll reverse alphabetical it. And then, oh, then you'll I'll have to go backwards very through it. Very messed up. <laughs> <laughs> and when the when somebody else subscribes and there's somebody in between two people, I know it, it throws off your your pacing, it, doesn't it? Completely. <laughs> uh, I want to say thank you as well to Chitlit Law, uh, who subscribed just before the show, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, so um, we don't have any news. We don't have a poll because I want to get right to the interview mm -hmm. and the game we're going to be playing atari lynx tonight Oops. very exciting i've got it all hooked up into my system my vga output modded uh, atari lynx 2 this is turning off which is pretty annoying oh no uh, let's get that back going so i can see your questions in the chat. In the chat. So yes. I'll just have to touch this every 10 seconds. Yeah. <laughs> um, so let me get up. Pro forehand. Uh, I would like to introduce the person behind Songbird Productions, who over the past three ish decades have released countless incredible games for the Atari Lynx, Jaguar, Nuon, Nuon, <laughs> Evercade, and Game Boy Color, and is about to host the upcoming Jagfest 2024 this awesome. June. Would you please welcome to Zero Page Homebrew, Carl Forehand. Welcome, Carl. Hey, hey thank you. Great to be here tonight. Welcome. <laughs> yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, as I kind of said in the intro, You've just celebrated your 25th anniversary of Songbird a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that's right. Um, let, let me just read out your press release about it from March 19th, 1999. Oh. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Carl Foran, well-known hobby developer for Atari consoles, is pleased to announce the formation of Songbird Productions to sustain Atari consoles into the new millennium. Uh, the emphasis of Songbird Productions will be to both publish games Carl has personally developed, as well as become a resource for other hobby developers looking to publish a game for any Atari console from the 2600 to the Jaguar. I've been, in quotes, I've been doing hobby development on the Lynx and Jaguar for a long time, stated Carl. Now I'm at the stage where it makes sense to form Songbird Productions. Atari fans everywhere will be pleased with the level of support I plan to provide for Atari consoles over the next year or two years. <laughs> or decade. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that year or two years has now turned to 25. Did, did you think you'd still be release it doesn't sound like it did yeah. you think you'd still be releasing games for the lynx and jaguar 25 years yeah, later i don't think there's any way i could have predicted that i mean it was certainly fun and you know back in the 90s 
you know, there was already a diehard uh, core of fans, you know, a few hundred, not thousands of people, but fans who were very disappointed yeah. the systems had uh, gone end of life and were looking for new games. So it was just yeah. a fun era to kind of get involved in that scene. Um, but yeah, I could not have predicted it. It would have gone on for 25 years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, around the like mid 90s, early 90s, everything like Atari was shutting it all down. Right. Everything was end of life. And then the homebrew scene started to pick up with yourself and um, Atari age. That's more in the 2001, 2000 era. But homebrewers were starting to make games for these right. systems and they needed a place to release them like a central location to bring it all together and you stepped up to the plate quite early yeah. in the process that was that was actually a, a very challenging part of like kind of launching songbird <laughs> there was trying to figure out how do you make physical games it's one thing to be able to program the game and that's hard enough it's hard enough to figure out you know, like how to yeah. engineer these old consoles when you don't have official you know corporate support or anything like that um, yes. But to actually make the circuit boards and the shells and boxes, <laughs> it was like that was all new to me. I never yeah. thought about taking on those kind of challenges. So it was kind of scary, actually, the first few releases that I did, because I had no idea how fans were going to respond. And you really had no template to work from, right. really. You had to start really from scratch and, I guess, analyze what Atari did, take things apart, look at the boards, see what kind of chips they used, and and really start from right. nothing yep. and, and work your way up. Pretty much. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a g great job for sustaining it. Oh, yeah. my goodness. I, I like the way in that press release how I start off by saying, well-known <laughs> hobby developer of, like... <laughs> <laughs> And, and you quoting yourself. Right. It's always weird when you, you have to yeah. quote well yourself. Known by in a press release, people, yeah. I think. <laughs> <laughs> There's dozens of us. Dozens. <laughs> um, so if anybody has any questions for Carl as we go through this, um, just type in, in all capital letters, question, so we can see it in the chat easily. And uh, we'll ask it of Carl. I just wanted to point out Gamma Dev's comment there that uh, you lasted longer than Atari did in the console game market. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You've actually dwarfed Atari, so yeah. yes, very, <laughs> that says something. Very true. Mm -hmm. Yeah, even even. Well, maybe not the Atari eight bit line. Well, yeah, seventy. Well, twenty six hundred came out first, seventy seven to ninety two. So that's twenty five years, right? Yeah. So yeah. you just tied them. You've just beat them. Congratulations. So, sounds like that's you're saying awesome. I need to release my own console now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, Except there we go. History shows us anything that might be my downfall. <laughs> yeah, well, you've got uh, pretty big support. You've supported the Evercade quite, quite largely. So that you can almost claim that one. Yeah. <laughs> yep. um, so let's talk about um, the game that we're going to be taking a look at tonight. Okay. Um, Microvaders. And this started as did it even have a name? No. When it first started, it it was it was nothing. It was a it was an a hidden secret game. Right. On another game that didn't get released, yep. but then did get released through you. So maybe you can talk a little bit about the very very early origins of the game that Microvaders started with and bring it up to where you released it through Songbird. Sure, yep. And it's still a, kind of a work in progress. I did release uh, a, uh, a preview cartridge a few years ago, but it's still uh, upcoming for yes. 24. But yeah, so back to that uh, press release in 1999, forming Songbird, there was a couple of things that happened that were sort of the linchpins of what made, made me want to form, you know, kind of a, a sole proprietorship, but, you know, just Songbird and make it kind of official. Um, I got rights yeah. to a few Jaguar games, which was really amazing. I mean, I, and that was just, you know, kind of shaking the trees, talking to developers that had left the scene, you know, a couple of years prior and saying, hey, do you right. still have your dev kits? Do you have your source code? So I got rights to a couple of Jaguar games and then I got rights to a couple of Lynx games as well. And um, I, right. and I also I was now. How did you yeah, go ahead? How, how did you get sorry to interrupt? How did you get those rights? Were they not under Atari? Like, didn't Atari not do work for hire or did they? release all the rights to the games like no, just quickly these, like, maybe talk there were a about lot of that. uh third-party developers so they were not um okay. and they were not direct employees they were developing you know kind of independently and then 
once the market was going south, of course, they closed up shop and went on to other systems, other, you know, other platforms to, to release games. So there, you get a number of orphaned, unreleased games that uh, the developers own. Right. And, you know, and they basically were going to languish forever. And that's why it was kind of a, this right. was, you know, I don't, I, I don't even know if I'm the first one to do this, something like this back then, but it was definitely not very common. Like people didn't go no. chase down companies and say, hey, can I get your unreleased prototype and either <laughs> fix it and make it releasable or if it's close enough to be release worthy or might have even been a final, uh, you know, final beta, but just not, yeah. not released because there wasn't the, the whole distribution system to back it and to really make it financially worth their while. Um, yeah. So, and I and I bet they were like somewhat relieved and happy to get their game out that they worked on for so long. Yeah, that's right. And 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 nowadays it would be a little difficult, like going back for games that didn't get released, say twenty years ago, and chasing down who owns what. Oh yeah. Maybe that company is folded, and now the copyrights are in the air. It's like, well, who owns the company? Right. Who owns the game? That's happened yeah. with a lot of companies. And of course, not just in video games and a lot of industries where there's intellectual property involved, you know, the rights can get, you know, kind of murky yeah. over time. But, but yeah, I mean, I recall, for example, talking to Rebellion, who is still around and quite a big uh, player in the video game space now. And they licensed Skyhammer to me for the Jaguar. And they were, they seemed pretty excited at the time. They're like, this is, you know, because they put it in like some uh, some trade newsletter, not newsletter, but like a newspaper at the time uh, right. saying, yeah. you know, hey, we, we uh, license it to Songbird and we're just excited because they're going to make like 300 cartridges. You know, and they, they thought that was pretty <laughs> neat that anyone was going to get to play their game besides them. So uh, yeah. that was very, oh, you know, yeah. very gracious That's... of them to work with me back then. Yeah. So so the game that Microvaders came from yes. was Lexus. So right. how did you find out about Lexus? Was it something that was written up in some upcoming game for the Lynx and then uh, just never came out because everything just stopped being released? Or yeah, so did they come to you? Lexus is not one that I had heard of like in previews, you know, from game magazines or whatever back then. There were some games that never got released for the Lynx and the Jaguar that did make the preview pages. Um, I forget how I first heard about it actually, but it might've been that another hobby developer had been in touch with the developer of Lexus, who also developed uh, Joust and Robotron for the Lynx. So he had a pretty good track record right. of releasing quality games on Big the Lynx. Games. Yeah. Um, and I think he had, a, you know, he had a beta essentially of the game Lexus. And so, you know, once I got a hold of it and I saw it, I was like, hey, this actually looks pretty good. I mean, it's it's a puzzle game, so it's not like an action shoot 'em up that is, tends to be more popular with a lot of uh, retro fans. But it still looked like a solid game. So I, you know, I talked about getting the rights to it. And uh, and then somewhere along the way, he mentioned, by the way, there's a cheat code where if you enter this code, it'll start this hidden game. So I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, it's 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 a one level, uh, you know, kind of a, a, a not even Galaga, but more like a Galaxian sort of game, uh, you know, yeah. no audio and uh, but, you know, decent graphics and decent gameplay. So I was like, well, that's kind of a neat bonus to get if you're already buying the Lexus game. Now you've got this bonus game that's hidden in there. But um, yeah, so that's kind of. And I always thought this game really should get finished. I mean, it's nice that there's a, a like a Galaxian <laughs> demo buried in the game, but it really, you know, deserves yeah. to be its own game. But it took me mm -hmm. until about like four years ago to start actually putting serious time working on it. So that means it sort of languished from 1999 to probably about 2019, <laughs> where I had not done a single thing with it. And I decided, you know, <laughs> I should put this on my list and actually uh, make it a priority. Mm -hmm. So you actually published Lexus. Uh, 25 right. years ago in in 1999 yep. um, um, so what that must have been one of your first first games it was uh, through songbird yep. yeah songbird released three Lynx games in the summer of 1999 at jagfest 1999 so we had uh two games yeah. that i had written well, one was a, a sound demo so it was sfx was a sound demo uh uh you know a ball and paddle game called ponks and then lexus so that was kind of my first i guess that would have been my first you know like um third party, you know, lost game, quote unquote, release was Lexus. And yeah. then later I followed up with the Jaguar releases at the end of 1999. So were you the first person to publish a third party game on the Lynx outside of Atari? I mean, uh, technically that's not correct because uh, several of the games, including Joust and Robotron and uh, Battle Wheels, 
which was done by Beyond Games, okay. those were third party releases. I mean, they had, I'm sure they, I know they worked with Atari uh, to, right. to get the support they needed to, to create the games and whatever. But those, as far as I remember, those were third party releases at the time, not first party. After, after the uh, after the Lynx was discontinued, were they released nope. or were they released during, during the life? So as far as okay, so you might have been the first one probably, after the end well, of life. <laughs> yeah, and that's probably not true either because uh, there were some developers <laughs> in Germany that had done hacking on the Lynx before I got involved, so they knew how oh, okay. they had already published. I think some a couple of games like they, there was a Tetris clone that came out okay. and a multi cartridge mm. called Simus. Uh, which I, I okay. you know, a few years ago, I got the rights to be able to republish those, but uh, those were released. I forget the copyright on those is like 1995 or 1997 or something. I mean, they were super okay. early in the scene. Um, so, not first, maybe, but a fast <laughs> follower. Very early, very very early. Um, so let's uh, boot up pretty much the equivalent of what the bonus game was, because you right. sent over the. Uh, it is branded Microvaders, but it, I think that's the only alteration right. that was done yeah, to it. All I did it. was I hacked the ROM. This is like kind of my first starting point was I hacked the ROM just to put in a new boot screen and to have it boot directly to the hidden game so you didn't have to type in a cheat code to get to it. So that's the only two changes. Otherwise, this is the bonus game as is from Lexus. Right. And was this uh, ever released as a standalone? No. This um, No. Okay. But this is what you would see if you had a Lexus cartridge, except for the Microvaders uh, screen right there. Yeah. I can't see what you're sharing, I guess. Oh, yeah. No, not not on there. If you have, um, not, if you have Twitch, yep, I've got up on Twitch going. I just pulled it up. Okay. Yeah, there'll be a tiny delay, either 5 to 20 seconds. Yeah. Um, so let me get to my microvaders question. So what, what drew you to this game to enhance it? What, what, uh, which was a hidden game within a game? What is, is this, um, something that you are drawn to like space shooters? Oh, Where yeah. do space shooters I mean. fall within your favorite <laughs> genre? Yeah. Considering genre that, game. you know, I was playing space invaders probably back in like 1979, 1980 on the Atari 2600. <laughs> And occasionally yeah. on, in the arcade, you know, when I could afford it. Uh, and then, of course, they came out with Galaxian <laughs> and Gorf and Galaga. And I just, I yeah. ate those games up. I thought, these are just incredible. I just loved, I don't know, just the uh, the, the enemies diving at you. And in some of the, you know, some of the games like Galaga, where there'd be uh, different stages and, you know, challenge stages oh, and yeah. regular stages and different behaviors. I don't know. It's something about shoot 'em ups that I just have always really enjoyed. Me too. I, I completely agree. I, I love the say the power ups, especially the the patterns, um, the bonus stages as well, um, especially in Galaga where you can or, or other games where you can double up your ships and, and right. things like that that get extra shots. So did you see this as, oh, this is a great starting yes. point yep. for a game. This is the bones that I can turn into and expand and right. enhance. Yeah, because I like the uh, the way the the different uh, enemy patterns come in off the screen and their you know kind of their uh, little curvy patterns till they get to the top formation and uh, there were decent explosion animations. There's two different types of enemies uh, and even the bombs that get yep. dropped. Uh, yeah, that's I found that was really unique. The the bombs that hit the bottom of the screen and explode. That's a very unusual yeah. thing in a in a shoot 'em up. Right. Because there is no real bottom you're supposed to be floating in space right, right? it's like well, what is it hitting see, oh it's the bottom so of the screen like this, this uh, kind of gray frame around the screen around the blue play field yeah I mean, that's the page background from lexus because lexus is kind of like a book or a scroll oh, where you're like yes. trying to form words and make the words disappear so they basically just yep. they put this galaxy end game <laughs> right in the middle of the the page graphics so that's why you get kind of that funny looking gray border around it uh Gamma Dev says, so if you exit out of Microvaders, is Lexus a hidden game? <laughs> <laughs> Not in this That would wrong. be funny. I don't think there's a way to get back to Lexus out of this one. <laughs> Not this one. That would be very, very funny. You'd flip it around. <laughs> and by the way, there's no audio in this. So you guys are not playing this on yes. silent mode. There is no audio at all. Yeah. Yeah, I should have mentioned that. Yeah, if people are thinking, oh, I can't hear anything. And also, uh, of note that nobody knows, we have to play this sideways. Yes. Because we have it hooked it, up 
to a television which does not rotate. If I could rotate this television oh. 90 degrees, <laughs> we would be playing it properly. I it, should I should do that one day. For, just, just in case for... you're wondering, I'm looking like this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, th so the capture, I have to rotate it 90 degrees as well before I output it and stream okay. it. It's just uh, a byproduct of, you know, the Tate mode for that, that Lynx can do. Right. Yeah. Um, so you've taken Microvaders from a hidden game in Lexus and brought it to what it is today that we'll see in a second right. with all the amazing add-ons. And you post in the Atari Age forums, somehow is it, ex it is extremely satisfying to my brain to take these old ROMs, patch in new features, and make the game whole. It's kind of like restoring an antique or an heirloom, I suppose. <laughs> so through Songbird, you've been able to bring a number of unpublished games to the public. Um, can you talk to us a little bit about finding the balance between game preservation and game enhancement? Because that mm. must be something that you think about taking a game that is in a certain, you know, form, especially Microvaders, and adding quite a bit to it. Right. Um, I mean, it, it's a little bit different than, say, a game that somebody's very, very familiar with. Um, yeah. And, and adding some stuff in and they're like, oh, that's blasphemy. But did, did you think a little bit about it in this game? What would not, like, say, disturb the original game player look or feel of it and take it to a new level? Yeah, yeah, basically that's what I was trying to do with a game like this, where, again, I looked at this, I said, this is a nice demo. It's kind of fun to play. Um, and it just goes on forever. It never gets harder or changes the, the layout or anything. But... Um, it just seemed like a shame that it never was a complete game on in its own right. Versus other games I licensed, you know, back to like to a Skyhammer or uh, even the base game Lexus itself. Those were essentially complete games. There might have been minor right. uh, bugs in them, or or uh, like in Lexus, there's no there there is audio, but there's no music. You know, so there's things like that. Yeah. But they're basically complete games. So you know, I would look at some games and say, well, these are complete enough that. Um, I either can just release them as is, or in a few cases, I did fix just individual bugs, right? I had to go in and patch the ROMs and, and right. fix one or two minor bugs that could affect gameplay or something like that, and then make it releasable. Uh, but something like this, you know, I don't, I didn't feel like it really <laughs> merited its own release with no audio <laughs> and really no, no right. sense of advancement in the game. And you can score, but, you know, you're just doing the same thing over and over again. And so it felt like it needed more to really justify... Um, a standalone release. Right. Okay. So now let's uh, boot up the newest version of yeah. Microvaders and take a look at that. And by the way, everything I do with this game, as well as a few other games I've done, not all games, but this one for sure, um, it's uh, it's all ROM hacking. So I don't have any source code. I had to go hack the ROM yes. myself. We will get into that. Yes, I have some <laughs> questions about yeah. that. <laughs> uh, okay, so this is an exclusive look at the newest version of Microvader. See, people can see it sideways mm -hmm. in the menu. Um, okay. And then we load it up and then it's proper. <laughs> for them, not for me. Yeah, for us, the menu is perfect. <laughs> Microvaders, <laughs> copyright 2021. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice new title screen. Yeah. ZPH24 Beta <laughs> Microvader is very flashy. That looks great. Code Dave Dines. Oh, oh, flash too quick. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you, you can read it over oh, there. Oh, I should too. read it over there. That'd yeah, so easier. there's a little bit of a delay, but you yeah. can at least see it the right way up. That's a great title screen. That looks really, really good. And uh, I do want to mention, of course, Alexander Grade, a Gradenu, uh, did the graphics. So all the new graphics you see, he is uh, responsible for that. Right. Yeah. And Alex did a fantastic job. He really oh. uh, lost he... you. Can't hear him. Can you hear him? Oh. It looks frozen on the screen here. Oh, yeah. One second. I'll bring you back. Probably just needs a reboot. Yep. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Now you're back. Oh, can't hear you. Oh. All right. Can you hear me now? There we go. Oh, there we there go. There we go. Yeah, okay. now we can hear you. 
Sorry yeah, about so you're that. mentioning Alex doing uh, the graphics, and I also want to give a shout yes, out to him because right. he did a fantastic job. Um, I think I contacted him and asked him if he could do a couple of basically like Starfield or Galaxy backgrounds for me, and he really just did a slam dunk. I mean, just you know, great looking <laughs> graphics that really sort of gelled the look of the game, and then helped me figure out how I how I could add you know other new enemies and you know kind of bring it all together. Oh yeah, his his graphical work in all the other, all the games that he has worked on is beyond stunning like his upcoming ga game uh jumping in shadows oh my god yeah that one looks Just fantastic unbelievable <laughs> yeah um uh, so uh let's see so yeah here's the here's the question about uh alexander you've teamed up with the masterful graphic artist uh, alexander grade uh, for the enhanced look of Microvaders, have you worked with Alexander before on projects? And how did you handle? Uh, how did you two handle the process of adding in new graphics? Did you give him free reign to come up with them, or was it a collaboration of ideas um, based on you know something else that you've seen? Um, good question. I. Uh, I'm trying to think how it all came together. I mean, I know I contacted him and I gave him pretty much, I'll say, free reign. I, I was still using the original game look that you were just playing a minute ago. Um, so very yep. simple colors, not very, uh, not really a scheme or a palette that tied it all together. And so he came back with a new palette, which helped a lot because, yeah. you know, it doesn't, ha you know, so you can't get every shade, of course, in a 16 color palette, but he, he kind of selectively was able right. to pick some blues and purples and reds and grays that really just gave it a nice yeah. look. And I liked that a lot. And so, um, I, but I let him kind of submit a number of galaxy backgrounds on his own. And then uh, I think he may have tweaked a couple of the enemy designs and then I tweaked a few of the enemy designs, trying to give them the, in very low right. resolution, but give them that pseudo shaded or 3D <laughs> look. Um, so yeah, I, I'm just very happy with how the game looks. Yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, so I'm going to run through kind of the the history of the release of Microvaders from, um, say, uh, 2020. So the first time that you posted about it, in the Atari H forums anyway, yeah. you posted a screenshot and a video uh, posted in a thread, New Lynx Games coming 2021 from oh, Songbird. Yeah. <laughs> I know, it's a bit embarrassing. <laughs> Story of but, my life. <laughs> you know, good good things are worth the wait. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, so on the Songbird website, the news release says, over 20 years ago, a little puzzle game named Lexus was published uh, for the Lynx by Songbird Productions. If you beat the game or cough, use the cheat code, you unlocked a small bonus game, which is a nice homage to classic arcade shooters like Space Invaders or Galaxian. But there's no sound, no music, and the game is really tough to play with dozens of enemies and shots swarming you all at once. Uh, Songbird looks to rectify the situation with the upcoming release, Microvaders. We've got a bunch of new features uh, planned, including title screen with music, in-game music and sound effects, animated enemies, new enemy wave definitions to gradually ramp up the challenge, power-ups including rapid-fire shields and more, coming fall 2021. Um, and uh, then you started uh, its own thread on Atari Age, which is continuing to this day. Yeah. Um, so. You said, I've been really getting into writing Lynx music for the past year or two, and you have a history in music. Music, If you could talk a little bit about that, um, because you are a musician. Yeah, I am. I actually, I mean, I started playing piano way back in high school, uh, which was kind of a late yeah. bloomer in terms of learning a musical instrument. But I, for whatever reason, I just kind of developed an interest back then. Um, and then just kind of tinkered with it. Didn't really do much with it in late high school or college. But when I got out of college and had a real job where I could afford to buy my own keyboard, I did. And uh, that kind of got yeah. me into writing music. And, um, and then I also did music at my church for a number of years. So I kind of got a lot of opportunities yeah. to play and learn different uh, chord progressions and styles and things like that. Um, and so writing music for games is something I've done for as long as Songbird's been around. Because back again to my first releases like Ponks and SFX, and th those songs are yeah. pretty simple, pretty crude. Um, but those were my first <laughs> tries at making uh, music for a video game. And I did some of the music on like yeah. Protector for the Jaguar. And I've done music on a number of Lynx games now that either I publish or even other people have published. Yeah, I've, I've looked at your credits on various websites and it's, it's quite a diversity. You know, you produced, of course, a lot of games. 
in music and games, coding and games. So you covered the, the full range of uh, putting your, <laughs> your fingerprints all over games. Um, so let me continue on here, uh, including uh, for the past year or two, including Cetipede, A Bug's Trip, Growing Ties, Unnamed, and Sky Raider. Uh, this one for Microvader is a two-channel track and uses the same music player, which I originally created for Centipede. Yep. I recently added a non-repeating intro feature, which gives me a lot more flexible on jumping to a short tune for a single playthrough than resuming the main looping tune. Right. So you, are you still working through the music or is that uh, you pretty much have the music for the game at this point? There's uh, probably another two or three songs I'm going to write for this game before it's done. But some of the songs, like, like the title screen song, I don't know if you got to hear it or not, but I'm really happy with how that turned out. Uh, I just no. put it in about two weeks yeah. ago. Oh, wow. Oh, brand new. Yeah. So nobody has heard right. that. So this is oh, the first wow. time people are ever we hearing that. Yeah, so we will play it again from the beginning because we might have been talking over it and things like that. We'll, we will yep. play all the music and let it run again. Uh, then in uh, October 25th, 2022, you released 50 copies of a preview edition of right. the game. Uh, uh, you said it was a complete game featuring 10 waves of alien ships, increasing difficulty, power-ups, in-game music, and more. So what motivated you to release a cartridge version of an in-progress game because that's i mean it, it is done there's like jam versions yeah, of games yep. released and and compilations and things but in this particular case what motivated you to to put this out yeah a fair question i guess it was a combination of feeling like um i had a sort of complete game at the time it wasn't just a demo version it had music it had sound right. effects it had power-ups and it had um you know, a story screen and even a victory screen. So it really was a complete game. It just wasn't everything that I wanted to do with the game. Uh, so between yeah. that and and the desire just to get something out there, because uh, I was also seeing a lot of interest <laughs> from fans as far as this looks great, when can I buy it? And so I, I kind of wanted right. to find a balance of, I didn't want to call the game done, but I did want to get people who are, you know, kind of, again, the, the diehard fans and collectors who were following what Somber was doing and thought, this is great, I really want to get this game, is a way for them to help kind of support the development too, because, uh, you know, no surprise, yeah. I mean, you do some game development as well as videos and everything, and you know how this yeah. how this goes, <laughs> that this is mainly a, a labor of love. Oh, yeah. Uh, you kind of do it in your free time. Oh, yeah. So uh, so <laughs> that's kind of why I thought I'll try something different this time. I haven't done that with very many games, but I thought I'll release sort of a preview edition, call it a full game, because it is. You know, it's a full playable game with a final victory screen and everything. Um, yeah. And just start to get feedback from people as far as what they like about it and what they want to see in a full version. Yeah, that's, that's a great idea. Give them a preview, get the feedback, and go, hey, what do you think? And, you know, people are chomping at the bit. To play the game as well right. they snapped up the 50 copies pretty yeah, quick they did go fast <laughs> <laughs> yeah so hey everybody wins um then you released a uh beta uh binary on the atari age yep. forum so everyone could get a taste of it as well probably for feedback as well yeah yeah because i didn't want to keep um, it totally exclusive you know i did that preview edition and then whenever it was every six yeah. months later or a year later <laughs> I released a, a smaller beta, so it, was, About six it actually had fewer features than the the preview edition. Um, but it was again a way yeah. for people to kind of see this is how the game's going to look and feel. You know, do you like it? Uh, you know, what kind of things would you recommend? Yeah. Um, and then you sold some extras uh, on top of the fifty unmarked, like scratch out fifty limited. I or think I sold like did. another five <laughs> cartridges total. <laughs> <laughs> there you go um so that that's kind of the release history of of microvaders in terms of public access right. to it um and people are asking in the chat when can they get their hands on it usually i do this at the end but people are asking already <laughs> and you do have kind of a, a roadmap now and how, how confident are you in oh, the boy. roadmap? I know, it's always scary to say uh, <laughs> when you think you're going to be done, because it's been it three is. years now, I've been, or three or three and a half <laughs> that I've been working on this. But yeah. I am planning to have this done for the Portland show uh, in, I think, end of September. So at PRGE, yeah. I think it's end of September this year instead of October. Uh, I think so, yeah. That's my plan, is I want to have it done, you know, on cartridge, yep. in boxes, ready to go. 
So the, I still have some work cut out for me. I, I can see the light at the end of the tunnel now. I mean, it's like six <laughs> months ago, it was still looking kind of overwhelming, all the things I wanted to get done. But now it's like, right. I know what I need. I need a couple of victory screens. I need uh, a couple more things I want to save to the, the on-chip um, EEPROM where you can save the high score. I want to save some other things there. Nice. There's two or three more songs I want to write. I need to add the boss. That's probably the most complicated thing is that there's a final boss fight I'm going to add that's not in the game yet. Um, right. Okay. So I do have a roadmap and I feel pretty confident. I feel like, you know, <laughs> if I was doing this full time, I could probably get it done in about three weeks. But as it is, it'll probably take me three months <laughs> and I'll exactly. get down to the wire, but I should be able to make it. Yeah, I, I think we're all in the same boat. It's like, well, if we could work on all this full time, it'd be amazing. We get so much done. But, you know, this this is a labor of love, like you yeah. said. So, you know, good things come to those who wait. Um, are you somebody who works well with a deadline or are you better without a deadline? It's too much pressure and it, and it kind of sidelines you and it's like, oh, my oh, overwhelming. A deadline helps. I know I kind of work. I, I cut. Yeah, it, it helps with me as well. Yeah. It's like, OK, you, you're like, I can you know it has break. to get done. <laughs> yeah. And, and I can almost break it down into, OK, this month I have to get this done. And then this month, I definitely have to get that done. And it kind of motivates you. And it's like, well, I have to find free time for this. Right. And it goes to the top of the pile. It does It does help. I mean, it, at the expense of other things, of course. But uh, uh, even with the, you know, the small <laughs> event I'm planning in June, JAGFest, that you mentioned earlier, um, that itself yeah. is helping we'll get me. To that too. It's giving me a deadline. It's like, I have to get this demo done for JAGFest, for Microvaders. I have to get some posters made up. And I, I'm, I have some other games that I'm prepping that I'll have for the show to do tournaments and stuff. So it's like, it really sort of right. focuses my attention. It <laughs> you know, sets me in the right direction. <laughs> Yeah. So Carl G says, when it's ready. No, he, so he has a deadline. PRGE, it's a big event. So that's a lot of motivation as well, because people will be just thousands and thousands of people will be there. Oh, and you and every one of them is going to buy. Are you there every right? year? Is that what you're saying? Every. Oh, yeah. Right at the door. You're going to have a booth right at the front of the door mm -hmm. and you just be handing them out. You have a deal with PRG that is included with the ticket price and you get. No, right. oh, just kidding. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the fistful of dollars in one hand. That's and the right. Hand They're running for the towards the song, song, you know? songbird booth. <laughs> you're, you're there. Uh, every time I go to PRG, you're there. Have you had a booth there like every oh, no. year at PRG? No, I okay. have not been there. Um, I don't think. Actually, let me pause here. Well, I'll answer your question, and then I'll tell you something else you can do in the game here. Um, so 2019 sure. is the sure. first time I had a booth at Portland, I believe. Oh, wow. Okay. And so, of course, that was right before the pandemic happened. So, you know, no okay. booth for uh, whatever, two years. And then I came back. Two years. Was it two years? Because I know I came back uh, probably in 21 and 22. 20. Or is it 22 and 23? Whatever it was. I think it was done, not there for two years. Was it 2020 and 2021? Uh, Probably. I think it was two years. I think it was two years. Yeah, so 2022 right and 2023 you were back yep. for? Yeah. Uh, and, and so, similar... so every year since 2019. <laughs> right, right. So, uh, but it was fun. I came out and kind of did a smaller booth in 2019 and uh, got to meet some other Lynx developers, like one guy from Europe that came, which was really fun. Uh, got oh, to meet him in person. That's awesome. And, um, and, and some other people that were there. And it was just fun. I hadn't done a booth in a number of years. I used to do booths back in the Vegas shows when they had those classic gaming expos, uh, you know, 20 years ago. Yep. Um, the last one of those right. was in 2014. So I kind of not done a booth for five years, basically. Oof. And I thought I should just try it again. Yeah. It'd be kind of fun. And, and I really liked it. It was just neat to see a lot of uh, positive fan response at the shows. Yeah, it's, it's great to meet people that you only know online. Know. It's like, That's I only know that you by your handle. Yeah, and I mean, I interviewed you there in a couple years right. ago, and I, I say hi every time, and I'll definitely be interviewing you again. Uh, this year, I've got brand new equipment to, to bring ourselves oh, cool. for live streaming from PRG, so it'll be a lot of fun. Uh, you were going to give a tip to Tanya? Yes, I, I can use whatever tips. Okay. <laughs> so I, I was actually going to show you a different part of the game. So if you want to press the reset oh, combo okay. and get back to the main menu. Which is? Option one and uh, pause. Okay. However you've got it mapped. Or you could just die. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, that can if you just die and say no instead of yes, there we go. it'll do the same thing. I got it. 
There we go. Okay. So what? Uh... Okay. So go to the story screen. So press the button to advance one screen. Uh, I, got, I have to wait for okay. it to catch up here. <laughs> we got the guy It'll talking. Take a second, yeah. So now you need to press the option one button, one time. Okay. Okay. Yep. Oh, and there's nice. A new guy on the screen. Yeah. Captain, we have sustained heavy losses. <laughs> Some of our pilots have ejected into pods. Can you rescue them before they are lost? Oh, nice. Oh, right. a hidden game. Go for it. All right. Go for it. So we were rescuing pods. That's what you're doing. You're rescuing pods. Oh, void. Oh, I get you. Ah, okay. Dodge and pick up. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Oh, and I can shoot. Okay. That. Oh, no, you can't shoot them. Oh, oh boy. Oh, my goodness. You lost a pod. That's okay. Oh, the poor, poor guy There's in the pod. There's a lot of dodging to do here. <laughs> <laughs> Neat. Okay, so the small ones don't hurt you, but the big ones right. do. And you're not able to shoot. You're able to shoot, but you're not Correct. able to destroy you can't anything. destroy it. So this ah, is like a non-shooting stage. Nice. Right. Very nice. Oh, and, <laughs> and And this stage... Um, going through the asteroids is in the game as a stage, correct? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and this is just a mini game within what was a mini game. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, basically, I just let you jump ahead in the story to the. If you would have beaten the first set of waves, oh. you would have gotten to this next. Gotcha. So I have a cheat in there gotcha. right now to make it easy to test the different sections of the game. Uh, nice. Oh, uh, she missed a pod because it was going at the exact same speed as an asteroid. Yeah, I saw one that. That guy was... had no chance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he so was I, right on top of one. I was really happy with how this part turned out because just to be able to get so many oh. meteors on screen and the animation, and then like you said, the smaller ones that are sort of like yeah. in the background, and then you got the foreground ones you have to dodge. Uh, just gorgeous. very happy with how gorgeous. it turned out. Oh, oh, okay. And now you're back on. into the game. Okay, so it just kind of skips ahead in the game itself. Yeah. Fair and now here you're playing a faster enemy. It's kind of similar uh, to the earlier enemy, but uh, much faster. Ah. Oh, boy. That makes now sense. Now you're in trouble. I am in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> and game over. There you go. Uh -huh. Sure, I'll play it again. Yep, might as well Show get some practice. Off. Okay, oh, um, so you brought Microvaders to what it is today without any source code by disassembling the original game. So looking how far the game has come, how much of the original code still exists? And also, <clears throat> do you think it would have been easier to rebuild the game from the ground up? Or was the preservation of the original code part of the process that you wanted to retain? I, I mean, yeah, what you just said is true. I wanted to retain as much of the game as I, I could. But in hindsight, looking at it, I definitely feeling at this point, I probably should have just rewritten the entire game from scratch because that's what I when you're thought. hacking a game, yeah. and, you know, because what it's hard to explain to people if you're not a programmer, especially, but you have to essentially take a, this giant binary blob of ones and zeros, figure out addresses yeah. in the, that blob that correspond to like, where's the player ship drawn? Where's the enemy drawn? Where does the enemy choose to fire? Where right. do you choose to fire? You know, all those kind of things. You have to figure out all the. All, because all you have is like a memory address, and it's like, what is this right. memory address that they're saving to? What does this represent? Lives, position on the screen, and and you get through it bit by bit, and as you discover, it's like, it's a fun puzzle. It right? is, and that's but... the part that I like, and that's the, back to your earlier quote from one of my posts where I said, it's fun for my brain. <laughs> it is, it's like, you know, it's kind of detective work. You're trying to figure out what made this thing tick, uh, where can you intercept different points of the game and then add your own functionality? And that's how I'm able to add sound effects and I can add music, story screens, right. change the, the enemy attack patterns, add meteor waves. Uh, and so that's, I really enjoy that part because it's kind of like you're taking something that's not finished, but has that good foundation or that, that, good, uh, that good basis for a game and trying to turn it into something yeah. very polished. Yeah, and, and there's a pretty active disassembly, you know, community in the Atari 2600. Obviously, much smaller games, but they like to see what makes them tick, and so they can alter them, too, right. and update them, oh, yeah. or, you Absolutely. know, cha change something that they like, and that's, you've taken it to the extreme extent of, like, almost creating a completely new game, but keeping the feel of it, right. of the original game. Yeah. Um, so is, let me just make sure. Oh yeah. Okay. So the new features 
in this that you've sent to me. There's, so there's 16 levels, and I think the latest one before this was 10 that people were playing so. on the cartridge. Yeah. So this has six six new levels. I I cannot guarantee we will get to them, but <laughs> yeah, <there's, laughs> we'll do our best. If you can beat this wave, there's another fun enemy coming up here, but you have to beat him. Ooh. Oh, ooh, do it. I don't know. We'll see. There's <laughs> only two left. You can do it. Ah. 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 <laughs> Almost there. Oh. oh, come on. Shoot, 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 shoot. There yeah. We go. <laughs> Let's see this. Oh, another wave. Okay. Oh, there, okay. It's yeah, probably after, one more, and then you have to. After, after this, this one, there's okay. another uh, enemy that'll appear. And dead. <laughs> and game over. Uh, um, so you've added lots of new music, uh, title screen animation, story screen animation, more sound effects, high score save to EEPROM, fully playable asteroid level that we're seeing right now, right. Uh, new enemies, uh, a boss fight, and your to do list from this version to what will be released at PRG. <laughs> um, 32 or more levels. Wow. So doubling the number of levels that you have yep. here. Um, adding another enemy to the game. And you've talked about that at end boss. Right. Um, fine tune the power up progression, which is always, always a thing that needs to be done. And you need game testers and things like that to make sure it's not too easy. Not too hard, just the right level of challenge. Yeah. Um, add a couple more songs, add a victory screen, and you say target release date, PRG 2024 uh, in September. So the the 16 more levels that you need to add, are they, I know one of them's kind of a boss level, uh, is a boss right. level, if you count that as a level. Yep. So are they kind of variations or do you have to come up with new attack? New attack patterns, new patterns that are coming in on the screen. Yeah, it's a combination of that. I've got, uh, there's another new enemy that's not in this version, but that I have uh, fully playable right now. And I'm still tweaking kind of like how it enters the screen and how many of them there are. Um, so there'll be a couple of additional new enemies in the final game compared to what you've got here. And yeah. Um, yeah, and design levels, a lot of it is variations of kind of these levels. Like, there'll probably be a second asteroid wave at some point where I'll do something a little bit different. Nice. Um, nice. And then... Exploding asteroids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, every game, of course, has the danger yeah. of feature creep where you keep thinking, oh, this will be fun, that'll be cool, and then you delay yourself another month oh, every yeah. time you say that. <laughs> yeah, because I was, I was seeing some people giving suggestions at, as you want them to in in the thread on Atari on the Atari forums, yeah. and you're like, uh, mm, that one's, maybe we can't do that, but maybe we can do this as a bonus or as it progresses, and it, it it it's it's a challenge opening yourself up to suggestions, but it's also good because you, maybe they'll come up with something you not haven't thought of. But a lot of things are like, well, that really changes the whole game, and it's yeah. like, well, we can't really do that. <coughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like one um, thing I'll point out, for example, is the power ups themselves. Uh, I've seen uh, you know Tanya's picked up a couple of power ups here in the game. Yeah. Uh, right now the power ups are kind of in a sort of a pseudo random progression so you're okay. not like there's a rapid fire there's an extra life there's a shield you know different things that can appear but they don't appear in the same sequence every time and that's one of the things i'm trying to figure out right. what's the quote unquote right way to do it is it good to have pseudo random where you never know what's going to come or is it better to have sort right. of a fixed progression of i always want to get the faster movement then i want to get the bomb then i want to get the rapid fire you know so that players could kind of build their strategy around knowing what's coming next right and i've and i've played games where they dole out extra lives when you're only when you're low on lives mm. and when you have a lot of them it's like no i'm not gonna dole them out so uh there is a there is an art right. to right. giving out power-ups and bonuses um, either based on gameplay or based on level progression how far you are into the game or say an rpg when you find a whole bunch of great armor and weapons you're like uh-oh <laughs> something bad's about to happen <laughs> be prepared <laughs> a boss is right. coming mm -hmm. yeah when there's a heart right before you go oh, through a door yeah heart it's and always... a door yeah yeah <laughs> that's danger time so um so do you have uh, game testers, uh, beta testers, or is it very closed off and it's just you kind of trying figuring it out? So far on this one, it's been a lot of me. 
Oh, oh, we've lost you on here. One second. I'll get you it's right funny how back. it likes to... Uh, yeah, you got to figure that nice. out. Yeah. And... You back yet? Am I here? You're here. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Beta testers. Uh, yeah, so it's mostly been me so far on this one, just because there's so much to implement, you know, and I wanted to kind of gel the direction of the game as far as knowing what kinds of enemies there is going to be, how the game's gonna, going right. to progress. Um, I am probably going to recruit a couple of testers now that I'm getting more to a beta phase where the game is close to what the final game will be. Um, right. You know, where, where you're just looking for bugs, not suggestions and like, how can I enhance the game? It's like, how is it playing? Right. Yeah. Right. I mean, you know, minor changes to gameplay. Like I said, like the power ups, for example, it'd be easy for me to change it from a, a random progression to a fixed progression. But if somebody said, yeah. you should add, you know, three new boss fights. Well, I could, <laughs> but that's a lot of time to add all that. And that might need to be safe for a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Microvaders to the revenge. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so. <clears throat> so, is there anything? Oh my god. Voice is going. <laughs> yeah, my voice. Mm. Um, so, before we um, move on, is there anything else you'd like to say about Microvaders um, that we haven't covered? Um, I don't know. I think we've hit on this. I want to talk, talk about Jag Fest and some other yeah. things, just a couple yeah. minor things before I let you go. Yeah, you should play the uh, the title music again, just so you can hear that. That's, oh, that's yes. the one I'm the most yeah, proud yeah, of. Yeah. <laughs> okay. about a one minute loop total i think yeah pretty pretty it's awesome <laughs> pretty decent length too <laughs> yeah. for a video game that's for sure yeah. no it's really really good um so just remind me how many voices does the links have you can do four channels uh, and so yep. i could do four channels technically for the title music if i wanted because there's no other sound effects but i've just stuck with two channels for pretty much all the music i've done oh wow this is only two channels very yeah. nice could be done on a 2600 no. <laughs> Very poor. Did you hear the music during the uh, the uh, asteroid wave? Uh, we have to have it turned down in studio, unfortunately, okay. because the mic picks it up. But if we have it directly plugged in. We'll have to listen to it after okay. the show. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, that's another one that I think is kind of fun. It's uh, I call that track Deep oh, nice. Space Groove. Ah, excellent. Very, very nice. You have to release it on vinyl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Has Songbird done any vinyl uh, audio releases? I know that's a Not huge yet, thing now. but you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, do a compilation of your best songs, right. you know? Put it on vinyl. I'm thinking like eight track, Two actually. tracks from... Oh, yes. Combination record and eight track. <laughs> yes. You haven't lived um, in the best eight track player in your car when you were a kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Um... So, um, before we let you go, tell us a little bit about your upcoming JAGFest 2024 and the 25-year history of it. Wow. <laughs> kind of 25-year history, yeah. I'll, right? I'll try to sum it up. <laughs> and how people can attend. Sure. And so get tickets. The JAGFest is an event that I hosted way back in 1999, and it just kind of happened to coincide with the first year that Songbird was being launched. And uh, that was a fun event. I mean, it was not huge. It was probably 40, 50 people that came. But again, a lot of diehard fans. You know, I remember people coming from um, uh, New York, Texas, Wisconsin, wow. Illinois, and I'm in Minnesota. So they came to Rochester, Minnesota for that event. And it was just a lot of fun. 
you know, we we played games. I got to do some like uh, my very first in-person announcements of like, and I'm going to publish this game, and I would just turn it on the TV oh, or whatever, wow. and people like, oh wow, you're going to release that, <laughs> uh, you know. So that was kind of fun to, to get that immediate feedback in the very early days of the internet. That is nice. When it wasn't like I think that was even that pre YouTube. Nice. So uh, you know, it wasn't common for people to upload videos yes. and share them online. True, very true. Yeah, they didn't come around to 2006, I think, YouTube. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> so you know, I, again, I hosted that event just kind of as, I don't know, because it had been hosted in other cities, uh, you know, for mainly for Jaguar fans, but of course I was a Lynx fan at the time as well. So we just kind of made it an Atari uh, system event and uh, just sort of a fun thing to do. And never really thought about hosting another event all these years, because <laughs> even a small event is a lot of work. And oh, but yeah. I thought, you I've know, hosted if I'm a lot of events. Another and, event, yeah. I probably should do one this year because of, of it being the 25th anniversary. And yeah, and uh, and sure enough, it is a lot of work, as I'm remembering now. <laughs> Way too much prep. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, and it's still going to be a small event. You know, that's why I limited it to 100 tickets because I intentionally want to keep it yep. small. I, you know, we'll see. I'm not really anticipating that we'll max that out right now. We're at a couple dozen people that are going to come, which is OK. I mean, if it's nice. a small group, I think we'll just get to relax and have fun and not worry about, uh, you know, trying to manage a large crowd and give you know, lots of people, things to do, uh, but there, there should be stuff for everyone to do. We'll have lots of game systems set up. We'll do some tournaments. I am actually going to give away a Microvaders cartridge that'll be essentially the same ROM. I'm going to give away uh, one cartridge of this. So I'm going to make one version of this nice. uh, beta cartridge and make that the prize for the high score tournament at JAGFest. <laughs> well, there you go. There's some incentive to get to JAGFest right. 2024. Right. So how do people uh, attend? When is it? And how do they get tickets? And yeah. I know there's some stuff included with the ticket as well. I think I remember yeah. yep. reading. So it's uh, June 28th and 29th here in Rochester, Minnesota. And the easiest way is to go to my website. So songbird-productions.com. Uh, again, there's a dash in the middle there. So songbird-productions.com. And you'll see links to the Jackfest tickets and to the T-shirts you can pre-order, uh, as well as some information about the event. And yeah, and, and uh, I got to remember here what all I'm offering. But I know uh, with the ticket price, <laughs> you get a $10 Songbird credit that you can use during the show on any game that we have. Uh, you get a, a Battle Morph audio CD soundtracks. So we actually have the Battle Morph Jaguar game. I have rights to that. Nice. And then I was able to publish the the soundtrack on just a regular audio CD. You know, so nothing special for the Jaguar. Uh, you can play it on any audio CD player. Um, so you get that yeah. for free for coming. And uh, and we'll try to do some fun things. I, we definitely want to do a few group photos. And I'm hoping, I know there's going to be at least a few people that came to the original Jagfest. So we'll have to do a before and after photo of made it back <laughs> for the reunion. Yep. Somebody in the chat said they went to the 99 one. Dan AVC oh, yeah. was there. Yep. Dan Icavelli, yep. He was definitely That's there. That's awesome. Uh, and a couple of people <laughs> have bought tickets that are coming. And... Um, I see someone asking a question about streaming. Oh, We're gonna yeah. look at that, and we can. And if other people have questions. We can look at those too. Um, yes. But yeah. We're gonna try to see if we can either record and or stream some parts of it. I, we're not gonna be able to stream the whole thing. There's just no way. Um, we're not gonna it's be just another that. layer that you have to take care of, right? right? It's like, oh, now yeah. I have to stream it. <laughs> but I would like to yeah. see if we could stream maybe a couple of select events. You know, maybe do some uh, just live uh, Q and A sessions or you know, man on the street kind of quick interviews. Um, and, and if we can't stream, then we'll definitely try to record a couple of things that will have a few video clips for posterity. Yeah, excellent. Yeah, the question that uh, JGKSPSX asked is, how many legacy Lynx game are still in the backlog? And that kind of ties into my next question as well, okay. coincidentally. Can you talk a little bit about any new games? Yeah. Or any games that are coming soon to Songbird, uh, and any conventions that you'll be attending in the coming year, up uh, coming up year. Uh, I know you said PRG 2024. Right. Okay. Yeah. So conventions definitely PRG 24 in Portland, and then uh, next spring. I missed it this year. It just happened about a month ago. I missed Midwest Gaming Classic in Milwaukee. I will be back for that next yep. year. Uh, really. Wished I would, you know, I would have loved to have gone to Milwaukee because it's a fun show. It's this kind of the same size or very similar to the Portland show, so it's a really big event. Wow, a uh, lot of lot of uh, retro fans there for sure. Um, yeah. I might, I don't know about other shows. It's so hard because again, with having a day job, it's hard to just be like, <laughs> and I'm going to go to six shows this year because that's like 
<laughs> you know, three weeks yeah. of prep, a lot of time, a lot of expense. <laughs> yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. And especially if you want to have a booth as well. Right. It's, that, that's yeah, attending a lot is too. easier. Yeah. I did attend a show in Ohio uh, last year. It's called Torg, which I'd not been to before, but uh, that was kind of fun. I've heard of that. Yeah. Um, a different, uh, definitely a different vibe compared to like a, to the PRG, a smaller event, but still, you know, I think a couple thousand attendees maybe. Uh, oh, that's good. So it was good size. But uh, it was fun to actually go to a show and not have a booth for a change. Just be able to walk around and <laughs> kind of browse everything else that's happening. Yeah. And so that was fun. Um, yeah. So that's... And games. Any new yeah, games, so games that are in the works or that you will be bringing to PRG that are new or that you're even working on in the next year? Yeah, definitely. So at PRG, I should have Microvaders for sale for, as a new uh, release. I will have another, at least one other Lynx game available there. Um, I'm hoping maybe nice. two other new Lynx games, and these are ones that have not been announced yet, so I'm not going to announce them here tonight. Um, yeah, secrets. But, the, yeah, nice. but they're coming soon. <laughs> um, the, the announcements will be coming. In fact, even backing up to Jagfest, for you know, even, even if it's only two dozen of us that'll be there, I am going to have several games <laughs> that I'm going to announce at Jagfest as far as upcoming Jaguar. Another and incentive Lynx to go. So. Nice. And a new on game. So I have one new on game that is in the pipe. Um, two Jaguar games for sure, maybe a third. And then uh, at least two more Lynx games, maybe three or more. I'd have to go look. <laughs> wow. So, there, so, tons, so this is tons. with other developers. It's not all just me because I would not have the bandwidth to do like all these games myself. So a lot of some of it is definitely, yeah. you know, working with other developers or licensing, you know, other uh, yep. existing games that I can reprint and that sort of thing. Right. So at, at different levels of involvement, right. you're in. Right. some are just ready to go and have all the elements ready. And some I'm sure you have to get yeah. some packaging together and you have to at least print print the covers and etc et yeah cetera. that takes time so a lot of and work. yes ultravore for the links that's still coming now that's been 20 plus years coming so that's really been on my <laughs> backlog for a long long time <laughs> we'll have demos of that uh, cartridge at jagfest so people who want to actually play it for the first time ever because that game has never been released it's not leaked online or anything so oh, this will wow. be a chance for people to play it in person and it's it's pretty cool it's a fighting game you know kind of a street fighter game it's uh, its limitation is that it only has two fighter characters, so not a lot of variety in the okay. game. That's what I'd like to add to yeah. really make it a, you know, again, kind of a polished, releasable game. Right. Yeah. Excellent. So there are tons of stuff to discover at Jagfest 2024. Yes. So right. <laughs> yes. yeah, head over, head over to Carl's website and mm -hmm. sign up, and uh, yeah, sounds Book like your a good, flights, right? yeah, sounds yeah. like a good time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we are definitely looking forward to seeing you in person again mm -hmm. at PRGE. Yeah, we'll be stopping, stopping by the booth and uh, chatting with you. Yeah. And uh, it was uh, a pleasure and an honor to talk with you again. Yeah, thanks so much and for having me. And to play your game. And to, yeah. and to play your amazing Microvaders. Now I will get a chance to play yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> I always say I, I love it when James does interviews because I, I just get to sit here and play the play the games the whole show yeah because so. <laughs> he has all the questions so that's i just right. let you I, take I don't it get away. to touch them till later so yeah. one of you gets so a I'm, sweet deal one of you gets a bum rap that's what i'm hearing yeah uh, <laughs> no. i don't know I, I like chatting with developers he does so. like chatting so i, I let him, I let him go, of, go i really appreciate it. you taking that yeah. time yeah. to have me on and and it's just it's fun for me to get to share kind of the video preview here and to even let a couple people try the game out and uh, see what they think about it, what yes. they like, and what they wish could be maybe tweaked a tiny bit. And I would be be very interested in feedback. Yes. So after after I play it, uh, we'll both give our uh, feedback, what we think sure. about it. Yeah. So well, I'm very very excited. <laughs> my my favorite genre. So uh, yeah. Hopefully I can do well. And, hopefully uh, I did it. Uh, he'll he'll do better it. than I did for sure. <laughs> yeah, do it justice. You'll get through the first wave, whereas uh, well, the so. first the first <laughs> I would multiple hope so. well not waves, but the first like level I think. So yeah. For me, yeah. this is a horizontal shooter because we have it I sideways. Know, I know, that's it, the one distraction. But it's fine. Is, uh... Up is up and down is down. It, it completely translates to the joystick. Oh, nice. So it's just like true. playing a, a side shooter. That's true. Yeah, it works okay. well. Yeah, it does throw you for a loop, though. I find when you're when when things are up and down, shooting up and down, you line <laughs> things up mentally a little bit better. Yeah. My brain, I I want to turn my head, you know, instead of <laughs> it's so funny, but but you it's still that 
regardless, fantastic. So much fun yes. to play. Get so much fun. Of people so. eventually with their microvaders game in a links, and they're all like playing it like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hold it horizontally. <laughs> Sideways. <That's>, uh, <laughs> you and you just want to grab it and go. Them. <laughs> just just yeah. turn it that way. <laughs> you don't have to play it like that, you know. Um, but thank you so much for coming on, Carl, uh, and taking the time to talk about your brand new upcoming game, Microvaders. Um, it's been an honor. Like yeah, I said, my so, pleasure. Thank you. Uh, yeah, we'll see you at PRGE in a couple months. Let's do it. And. Uh, have fun at Jagfest. All right, thank you. So we'll see you Bye-bye. then. Bye-bye. Bye. That was awesome. Yes. Yes, always great to have developers on the show. And we bought new earbuds recently that have reportedly a nine hour battery life and it worked well. Can I have the uh, other earbud? Yes, please, so I can put it away. Get the chat the on chat. the screen. Oh, excellent. That'll be good. Yeah. Is this, this is the new one, right? Yeah. I got a, I bought a set from me too, which was very nice. Yes. So we have two sets of these longer wearing. Oh, warning. Sideways. Warning. Oh, the treat oh. ball is loose. Unleash the treat ball. The treat I didn't ball hear anything, loose. but that's oh, okay. Oh, because it's on the wrong. Thank you, Nostalgic26. Woo! Thank you. I will switch to something that will actually say that. Okay. One second. Let's go to the treat ball. All right, we got some cat time. Two balls. They've been One ball. waiting Two balls? patiently. Yeah. Two balls. Waiting patiently oh, for the cats. cat balls. Hey kitties. Hi, cat pong. Yes. yes. Oh, get the box. As oh, well. the box. That's right. And I got a big new box that Shut I haven't up. opened yet. So we're going to expand the box. So soon. it's a little bit bigger. And I'm about to trigger the sound. Okay. So that the cats will, even though they're already excited. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> oh excited, my they? goodness. How many do they get each? Um, more than like. I'm going to give them five each. How about that? I have a feeling oh, they'll be the a treat ball. Is no, get your nose out of there. Oh, Six. yeah, we have plugged in. Six each. Six each. That's How about that? You guys heard it, so oh. that's good. Adjust, adjust. <laughs> They're very anxious. Thank you, Nostalgic, for treating, treating. the cats. So you're gonna have to open them. That's okay. okay. So we've got a yellow, we got an orange ball and a pink ball. You ready, cats? Drop the puck. How open do you? Uh, almost full. Okay. All right, are you ready? Go! Go! Go, cats, go! Oh, Tari's got one already. Oh, Sprite, oh, he's taking it away. Gives a chance for Sprite to get some. Come on, smack it, it around. around. So timid. <laughs> so timid. Oh, we got it, yay! There we go. Yeah, thank you, Songbird Pro. Yes. Thank you, Carl. So let's... Oh, I'm, uh, Songbird. Yeah, it was the, the same general dude from Cyber Virus and Songbird. Yep, Carl says, animation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's awesome. Game. These cats. Cat. Uh, cat football. Cat soccer. We rotate this. Get it back to where it should be. Well, some people rotate games one way. Yes. <laughs> some people rotate the games the other way uh -huh. because the links can do it either way. Ah, uh, gotcha. So I had it set on my other. Oh. Other, uh, oh, the game audio is a li is really good, but loud compared to the two of us. Oh. Uh, check, check, check. It should dip down. Oh, because it was in the background. Mm. Okay, it should be fine okay. now. Let us know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> game audio really good, but very loud. Mm -hmm. All right. Excellent. Okay, deep space sensors have detected an aggressive Icta swarm. We must hold the line, deploying all fighters for counterattack. Let me try and move it down just a bit. So I did have to readjust. There we go. Let's move it over a bit. That should be better. Okay. 
ready. I love the purple fading too. Time to destroy. Oh, oh coming down already. Yep. You can definitely get caught in the corners. Oof. That is definitely the bad place to be on this game. And they do a little fake out, a loop yep. to loop. Just in, th in case yep. you're... Uh... They, they definitely have a bit of a Galaga looping going on there. You can't have more than two shots on the screen. So yep, that's the just... same with Galaga. Is it? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just to see if you get them close. Yes, you then can fire you can, off you can very continuously rapidly. fire, yeah. I think it's two on Galaga. I think you might be right. I just... Uh... I love how they come in really tiny. Yes, the music in this is great. Oh my god! This is hard. <laughs> It is hard. It's hard, also hard doing it sideways. <laughs> I, I, There's I don't something mind about that. top down that I find a little bit in, more intuitive. Not, not, you know what I mean? It's like, just nor It's more normal for yes. a fixed, uh, fixed shooter. Like my brain, when it sees written words, wants to turn sideways. So when you see score oh, well, written this way, you you want to turn your does, head to read the words. That does make sense. It's it's a very instinctual thing, I think. Did I just get. I got you a, got a power up. Oh, was it was it a shield? It looked I'm like it was a shield, but sure then what the power ups are. I meant to ask Carl, but you were chatting. So yeah, um, yeah there are power ups oh. there. I'm oh, not fast sure. Shot. Fast uh, shot. Fast uh, shot. Ah, there we go. I'm sure any um, manuals or material that come with the, the yeah. cartridge will explain all that really well. Yeah, it's shooters are usually games that you can kind of figure out pretty quick. The mystery is usually the, the power-ups. Oh, Fast Shot is nice. There we go. <coughs> now, I don't think there is like a Galaga pickup kind of thing mm. where you get like double ships or something. Not that I've seen, but I didn't get too, too far. <laughs> so you'll probably get farther than me. You already ah, are. Ah. Yeah, really? they can really get you in the corners. Oh my god, yeah, don't go in the corners. You have to be very careful. Stay towards the center. See, so take multiple shots, just like Galaga. Oh, oh, power up. What is it? It flashed for a second, but... Is it faster? Um, More? Still, Extra shots? I mean, I still have... Three shots? Uh, no, still two shots, and I still had the fast shot. Oh my god. Cats are still going at the balls. Yep. The truth balls. Is there any left? None? Nope. How about this one? Just keep uh, knocking around. Oh, there's one in there. There's one left. Oh no, I died again immediately. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I do that? Uh, I'll blame the cats. Okay. Cats, it's your fault. I I kind of love the low resolution of the links. <laughs> yes, yeah. Um do I have to start from the beginning again? Oh. Uh, do I? <laughs> oh no. I only made it to wave three out of sixteen. That was my, only my first go, so. This is way more. Can you it up, can you? Is it too big? Maybe. I always feel bad for Sprite. He always sits outside of the box and kind of waits for the opportunity. Can you move the mouse so it's not hovering? I can't read that full statement on the screen. What does he say? What does uh... Carl say? Carl is responding to Vitoko. Okay, what did Vitoko ask? Um, I never saw Link's back in, in, in the time. It was usual to have games to be played in portrait mode. How how do the controls work? Uh, Carl says, very unusual. Only two to three official games supported it. Oh. Controls are rotated 90 degrees in the software, which makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. You're all done. Which the luckily box. translates well box. to a joystick. Uh, up is up and down is down, yes. even by sideways, so yeah. I'm like really happy about that. Because there there are some video game systems that support this mode, other than the Lynx. Tate mode. Um, yeah, um... I can't name them off the top of my head, but I know like, so, um, PS4 um... might have some games that are in Tate mode. Mostly, They're mostly shooters. Is that Most... how you pronounce it? Tate mode? I, I looked it up last Carl, time I had to. Carl was um, responding to a question by Every Tower Collections about. Um, besides this, Clax and Gauntlet, what else uses Tate mode on the links? And, and Carl said Raiden. Oh, another shooter. Yeah. Yep. Which makes sense, the shooters. It does. Yeah. Do 
well on the long form screen. So, yeah. Well, oh, I think there's some Switch games that support touching. Well, that kind of oh, makes sense, that too. that really makes sense. That kind of makes sense, yeah. The Switch is perfect for that. Yeah. I mean, in handheld mode. Yeah. Picked up my Switch a little time. Enough mm. to sell it. No, just kidding. No. <laughs> just kidding. We have, like, hundreds of games we haven't even played yet. JGKSPSX. Wonder Swan Switch and Evercade are the only touching mode systems Wonder besides Link's. Yeah. Well, they kind of have to be. I don't. What, I mean, I, inherently Tate, but there are some PS4 games. What is a Wonder Swan? Um. <laughs> it's a handheld game system. Okay. I don't know much about it. Okay. I had Newer an opportunity or to. Older. Old. Old, okay. It's not super old. Like an actual it's retro not, system. It's not 80s. I think it's okay. 90s. Damn it! I do it! Bon, um, Bandai Namco's handheld. Okay. Oh. I, I don't think I've, I've seen that one before. Who so. is the right company to have a handheld? Or to have a console. <laughs> um, That's a great name. I had an opportunity really? to buy one in a lot of games. Oh, really? And I think you remember this. It's my most frustrating game buy ever. Mm -hmm. um, so somebody advertised a huge lot of handhelds and game systems. Mm. I had to miss that power up um, okay. on my Craigslist or wherever. Yes. Um, number of years ago. <gasps> Can you watch this cat? Please? I am. I am. He's being a bad cat. He's trying to get at the treats. And um, they said, "Yep, yeah, come on by at blah clock whatever." And so I show up. I was with you, I think. Yeah, you were with me. <laughs> it was very confusing. And um, and then I go and I ring the doorbell and I phone them and they're line is disconnected yeah it was very strange it was very strange and then i stuck around like for about 45 minutes and then i was able to phone them and uh, yeah i go for the power up and i die um and i was able to phone them and they come out of the house yeah that they gave me the address and i was at their house yeah and they come out of the house and some guy has a huge box, multiple boxes, multiple people carrying boxes of game systems out of the house. Yeah. And I'm like, what? What is happening? What, what just? Like yeah. you agreed to sell this to me. And what happened is some other dude named James also showed up at the same time. Was messaging him. He got mixed up of who was who, and that guy came minutes before me. <sighs> minutes I, before me i also suspect it was like I, the james might have just been an excuse because i suspect right. anyone who was interested they said come here at this time maybe with the intent of of haggling to get more money that's, out of people that's possible you know but anyway someone beat you and they and ended up with I the did, whole lot but i did talk sucked. with that guy and i said oh is there any of these you don't really want yeah and he did he said no <laughs> He was like thinking about some of them. Yeah. And, but the Wonder Swan was like he had everything. Everything. Every yeah. console, and Wonder Swan was in there. Oh. He had no games. Just just, just, just every the console. console. Like I would have been set for life. <laughs> I think oh. there was a Neo Geo in there as well. Wow. And it was like, it was a lot of money, but yeah. for the amount of money it was, yeah. it was a screaming deal. Yeah. Like just someone just getting rid of everything. It was like thirty consoles. <sighs> it was it was thousands of dollars, but um, I had the money. Yeah. I was like ready to buy it. Yeah, the one that got away. Eh? That was the big one that yeah. got away. <laughs> or all stolen, says Captain Classic. That would be very unusual, to be honest. That, that they would that have many? all those special, like all of those games. Well, they could stole, it, steal it still could have been stolen, house. but. That would have been a very risky post. Oh, yeah. To post that many specific. Sit. Yeah, you would think they'd break that up, but. Yeah, they wouldn't advertise it all at once. Oh. But yeah, that was the big one that got away. Yeah. VVG says similar thing happened to me once looking at a used motorcycle scheduled three of us at the same time that, without telling any of us, hoping for a bidding war. That is. And I terrible. know that's a tactic people have. It's a bad tactic. I suspected that's what they were doing because I. I yeah. I don't know about that. I don't know. Because they would have, like, answered their phone. 
or been outside. But or... the guy could have gone in and he said, oh, well, there's another person coming for it. And then, then he haggled him up. Because we don't know that he paid this, the same amount. Hey! <gasps> Can you watch the cats? What are you doing? They're destroying precious things. Oh, retro. 800 XL. 800 XL. I was trying to remember which one. <laughs> no! Yeah, I bought that from the 8-bit guy. Oh, so cute. On his website, not personally. Bad cat. Ah, ah, I was stuck in the corner. What is up with you? You guys will get treat time, don't you worry. It'll come. It's not yet. It's oh, not yet. this is hard. James, There's James. only four things 19, on the screen. Wow, that's a pretty high, high, high score. These guys are brutal. Oh, they are brutal. They're swarming me with and bullets. And you have to hit them three times, four yeah, times? Yeah, that's the problem. I it's think. more than two. <laughs> It's like, not the normal Galaga twice. Like, are they it's going definitely for more. me? No, they're not. Hi. Hi. Maybe they are. It's hard to tell. Sometimes it <laughs> seems like they're going for you, but they're actually not. They're just in a pattern. She was watching. She saw the whole thing. It started to fall over. Then it fell over. <laughs> Who was watching? <laughs> Tanya was watching the whole uh, bad cat spiracy and she did nothing? Is that what you're saying? I saw him. I didn't see what he was doing. Oh, what were you doing? No, okay, I don't I know encourage. Who to blame. I don't encourage this. Thank you for tattling on her. <laughs> Double down. I saw something happening, but I wasn't sure what it was. Uh -huh. Yeah. This cat's purring, so he's obviously very proud. Oh, very. that's a shield. <gasps> that's a sustained shield. That's a shield. Ooh, nice. Are you slower? Uh, maybe. Oh, oh it goes oh, away after no. the end of the level. No. I'm doing better. Doing You're better doing this very time. well. Yeah. I don't know what level I'm on. I don't know. It doesn't say level. The score's good. Um, having a level on the screen, I don't know if it's too late to add it in, but I love knowing the level. Well, it doesn't matter too much if the levels are well defined. It's like, oh, I made it to the sec first boss. Oh my god. Um, or I made it to the the mini, the four mini bosses, the first four mini bosses. Oh, so, um, Carl says level is in the plan, so. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I love that. Because I am all about levels. Ooh, that was so close. That was so close. Oh my god. Oh, and Carl, do they go for you? Do they die for you? Because it feels like they are. But, um... They, I swear they dive in your direction. Oh, I knew it! Certainly ah. the little... I was... I know they're shot, but they I, they look like little knives coming down. They definitely go towards you, for sure. Sometimes. Sometimes. That's what, ah. it, that's what it feels like. Yeah. Okay, let's do it again. <laughs> Did I get that 19,000? No. It's too even. I just got 15,000. So the high score that's built in is like attainable, but pretty, pretty high. The good thing about getting further and further in a game is that when you go back to the beginning of the game, mm. it feels really easy. Like it feels easier and easier when it starts off. Because you, you gain tactics, you gain... Yeah. Um, you recognize patterns. Like, they do start again where they start. Like they yeah, they always back come back to, the, to their sort of start location. Which certainly, yeah, helps you figure out when you have one or two left where you need to shoot. You just need to watch ah, where, where they between start them. off. The problem with them being small <laughs> is that you accidentally shoot in between them. Oh, God. Yeah. Oh, it's so hard when you've got that many on the screen. Whoa. Swarming me. I need this power up, whatever it is. Oh, oh that's a nice one. Ooh, so the crosshair one, one kills them all. Yeah, yeah there's one. too much space below your ship. Enemies use it against you. It's true. <laughs> well, I they think get that's under you. from the adaption of the original game. Because yeah. below the ship was like literally nothing. It was the outline before. Yeah, and I'm... Looking at it, not looking at it that oh, way. Really? Sideways? Yeah. You can't yeah. adapt? No, I can't. No. I've got the fast, fast shot now. Nice. It's the best power up is Does the Doesn't last shot. the whole time though, right? It, it, uh, it's yeah. gotta have a it timeout. Continues. Really? Yeah. Level to level, it's I'm pretty, pretty fast. sure. Die, die, die. That's kind of a secret is to get the ones that are standing still. You kind oh of God. have to anticipate them, though, because by yeah. the time the shot gets to them, they've already moved. By the time you get in position? Yeah. yeah. Ah. Okay. Get this one. There we go. 
know. It does last until you die. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you that's get the, that that's, is a pretty good power up then. That's why it's a you good You definitely power. want to keep that one. Oh, more shots in this guy. Yeah, the graphics are stunning. Oh, they're beautiful. The backgrounds Alex are gorgeous does an amazing too. Amazing job. Ooh, oh, oh, what is that? Is it going to continue? Extra ship? Oh, no, no. no. Shield. Oh, it got it just as the next level was starting. That's pretty good. That is good. Oh, no, it wears off. It, oh. No, it doesn't last forever. I thought it lasted till the end of the level. No. That's too short. Just time. Carl, make that longer. That's really short for a shield. I guess it, it's good for I a mean, bit. It's but... just good to save you for a little bit. Not the shield. What? It's not the shield. Oh. Oh. Oh, it's just showing that. Okay, what is it? Oh, got him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. At least you can see the enemies moving around beneath the player ship instead of disappearing off screen, then returning from below, says Chelsea Ooh. now. However, they do go off on the side and come back. Oh, do they? Yes, they do. Because oh. I've gotten I noticed that. murdered a couple of times. Oh, that. what's that? <gasps> That's... Oh, not even one extra ship. Two extra ships. Ooh. Oh, my God, I think. That finally, that's the first good, time I've got good that. Question, nostalgic. Are enemies worth more when in flight than in formation, like uh, Galaga? Oh no, I, I lost my uh, rapid fire. Oh, I died again. One extra ship. Oh, you just got one extra oh, okay. ship. Okay, I thought yeah. it was flashing. So. It looked like you. <laughs> boom. Oh. Oh, only uh, the ones in flight. Boom. No. That, that wasn't the one. Carl says yes. Yes, they are worth more in flight. Okay. Which, again, makes, makes sense. Because they're harder. So if you're going, just like Galaga. You're, like, going, if for you're going for high score. High score, you get them when they fall. Yeah, yeah. you don't. But there are so many on the screen, you d you need to kill them. I need to eliminate them. Before you them. start tumbling down. Yeah. I mean, maybe there are some expert players who will develop, who can just wait until they all tumble down, but that just well, sounds like a nightmare to me. you see people playing Galaga, that's, <gasps> that's the, what the they really, do. Really, like the, oh yeah, the high scores. Amazing. watching anyone who's an expert in anything. It's always oh, impressive. Oh, it's amazing. Like the Tetris, the world oh, series God. of Tetris. At PRG. Oh. It's unbelievable. It you, is unbelievable. You can't see it fast enough, and they're playing it. I know. I know. My brain doesn't process it that quickly. No. Oh, good job. This is an amazing shooter. It's so good. It's got everything you want in a shooter. It's got the power-ups, it's got the uh, different patterns, it's got different enemies. Yeah, it looks great. And it looks great. Yeah, the colors, the graphics, the planets in the background. A uh, bomb destroys up to four enemies. Okay, oh. so I thought it the ones, it seems to destroy the ones closest to you, maybe the ones in flight coming down. Yeah, I've got fast shot now. Shoot them as quickly as possible. Ah, oh my god, I don't know how we're stuck like that. Ah, oh, ah. yeah. We're all on the left hand Good. side. Ah, have to jump in and shoot and jump out again. Ah! Oh no! Oh. Ready? Uh. Quick, shoot them while I. I don't know what that is. It looks like a shield, but he said it wasn't a shield. But it is a shield, isn't it? I don't know. It's a temporary shield. Uh, like or it makes you invincible, seconds? maybe? For 15 seconds. The reason why I said that is when you're in the, the asteroid fields, you flash green and then things can't hit you for that brief period of time. Oh, okay. So maybe it's, it is, it is a, shield. a shield. Okay, okay just a really quick shield. Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's, it's handy, but it doesn't last for very long. Start, yep, starting to shoot while they come in now. Bastards. <laughs> very dangerous. You have to kind of stand, oh, it's so dangerous when they come in and shoot. Because they're so low, their bullets start mm -hmm. so low. Oh, I'm gonna push them into the corner. Oh, I don't like this. This is not a good situation. Oh my god. 
whatever that is. Oh, I died for it. Don't die for it. It's not worth it. No, power-ups are not worth dying for. Unless it's two extra life. I which... <laughs> was cornered. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm hitting a wall at about 15,000. Your high score is 19,000. Ah, it's not me. Yes, it is. Isn't it? No. No. Oh, that's that too even. I, I haven't been past oh. like 16 or so. Well, that's still pretty good. Okay. Here, you play one more. Mm -hmm. The default score was 1,000. Oh, so I did get 19,000. Okay. I'm pretty sure that was you. It just that seems was... so suspicious. The 19,000. Definitely not me. Suspicious. Hi, cat. Oh, Nostalgic asks about changing the score color. I'm guessing he means at the bottom behind um, the big asteroid. I'm terrible. Because the top, the top is very visible because it's right on the black. Yeah, putting a color going over gray is really tough. Um, I don't know what would be good. White wouldn't be good. Black wouldn't be good. Red is a bit garish. If I had to choose from the colors that are on the screen. Blue would stand out, so maybe blue would be good there. Songbird says, only contrast on the starting level. Later levels have darker backgrounds at the bottom. Okay. I mean, it's not, you're not really too concerned <gasps> no! about seeing your score until obviously later levels when you're actually doing well. And I'm dying because I'm just overwhelmed. Like, I try and shoot them as they come in. Yeah. But then there's just so many bullets. And so many guys diving for me. But every death is definitely my fault. Like, I know I could survive it. It's not a case of this game is unfair. Because some some games are like, that's just, I just can't avoid that. That's, that's like ultra human level reflexes you need but this is like oh you can't you have to plan out where you're going to be on the screen to avoid this this is the hard level this is the first really hard level it's kind of like a mini boss level a bunch of mini bosses ah, right into it am i dead i'm dead ah. nine thousand that's my high score nine thousand <laughs> Not even dropping, dropping bombs. bombs. I know. Yeah. Uh, I okay, have, let's do this. I've gotten to the bottom. Line. I don't know how I got nineteen thousand. The wine didn't see that run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Maybe I just shot a lot in midair. Atari's in a very cute pose in the hallway. <laughs> He's up I'll against the wall. Just show him on the cat cam. He's leaning up with his big fat belly. Yep. And I've had too much uh, turkey dinner post. <laughs> yes. Relaxing post-Thanksgiving. Exposing his gigantic, uh, yeah. not gigantic, but oh, fuzzy beige belly. Cat shaming. No, I'm not cat shaming. He's so <laughs> cute. He is. He is very cute. I don't think I can move the uh, cat cam over to where he is, unfortunately. Mm. I mean, you could get him on the cat cam. We'll get him after I after this game. If see he's what, still there. See what we can do. Yeah. He's super cute. He's super cute. <laughs> bullets, fast bullets. Yes. Is that what that what one is? Uh... This is the best. Oh yeah, dead. All of them dead. Oh, how did you escape? Right. <laughs> now you're dead. Oh, that is moving faster. Is that it plus. moving faster? The plus. Ah. Yeah, that is very helpful. That is helpful. Some games... Moving faster and faster shot. don't want to move faster. It depends on the game. Sometimes it makes it's it a like lot harder. too fast. Uh, I need it. Yes. Die, 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 die. Oh, oh it yeah. doesn't kill him. It doesn't oh, that's kill him. A, uh, it, it protects you. Completely protects you. Yeah. Oh, that's a different kind of shield. Yeah. I can see why it's not... Um, not very long. It's yeah. an invincibility. It's invincibility, not a shield so much. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. If it was a shield, then it'd be like, okay, well, it needs to be longer. But 
is not a shield. It's, it's invincibility. invincibility. Yeah. I would have used nice. it to much more effect if I knew that. <laughs> because invincibility is very get, powerful. Get a bit of an Optimus Prime vibe from, from these red aliens flying down. <laughs> Just the colors, color scheme. Intangibility, yes. Intangibility. <laughs> Now you know, and knowing is half the battle. Yeah. G.I. <laughs> Joe. Anybody familiar with those uh, dubbed G.I. Joe PSAs? Dubbed? They're yes. Dubbed? Somebody remixed all the PSAs. Oh. Gave them completely new voices and new things to say. And they, they did a lot of alterations. Oh God damn it. To to the whole thing, like they made them slow and made them pause and say really crazy things. Oh, finally! And um, I had them on my hard drive. Your hard drive? Until I lost everything in like, when '99 or at some point I lost them. No, 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 much later than that. The disaster of '99. Well, there was, <laughs> yeah, there yeah. was one in '97. Another disaster. disaster of '97. Okay. Yeah, where I lost absolutely everything. Oh, that's brutal. Um, but somebody had. Oh my God, 14. Oh, Chitlin last seen those. Mm -hmm. And Prow Seven as well. Pork chop, pork chop sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so one where kids are um, cooking something on the stove. And the house catches fire, <laughs> and the guy, and I can't, I don't know the G.I. Joe characters very well. Um, the firefighter character goes in and rescues the kids and says, oh, here, get out quick. Yeah. Um, but in the fake PSAs, the remix one, he like comes in and shouting pork chop sandwiches. Pork chop sandwiches! <laughs> like he's like, oh, that smells so good. <laughs> And the kids are like so dumb. <laughs> they, they dub them like they're the most dumb kids ever. It's so funny. Um, it's funny what brings back memories, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Codename Barbecue. Codename Barbecue. Ah, there we go. Yeah. Barbecue. And the guy who has a bubble over his head, mm -hmm. um, that is like the underwater G.I. Joe guy. Um, he's in a, a couple of them, and whenever he's in it, all you hear is because <laughs> you can't hear him because he's got a, a complete. He can go underwater, and he's got a bubble on his head. It's so funny. It's, ah! Oh, it sounds like the precursor to, to the bad lip reading um, um, YouTube channel, where they just yes. they just kind Very of uh, ad lib on top of the uh, the the video footage. But they did extensive oh redoing. edits and everything yep. and timing, right? Yeah. And that guy yeah. who did them went on yeah. to work for Tim and Eric. Oh, really? Yep. And you have that same kind like, of feel, like early feel. Like a, a comedy style, sort of? Yes. Yeah. Same comedy interesting. style. Interesting. That's yeah. really interesting. Um, but I lost them. Um, but then somebody um, redid them oh, really? in HD. Really? When G.I. Joe was re-released on... Not in HD, but really good quality. Maybe okay. it was HD. Um, and completely redid them from scratch, from the source material. And um, and then I couldn't find it online, but I found him. The guy who did the it. The guy who redid it. Oh, redid it. Okay. And emailed him. And he sent me an ISO of, the, um, of his remixes of it. So a full DVD copy, which included the originals and all of his redu redubs. Out. Really? Yep. And the not like the originals of the PSAs, um, and the originals I think that the original guy did and his versions. So, so speaking, I still have that. Speaking of PSAs, I had this so little little like deja vu or something. Yeah. Do you remember there was a commercial and it might have been an animation, maybe not, but it was an anti. It was like a fire safety one, and it was a guy and his robe catches fire as he's making food on the stove, no. and it like like a flame comes up from it. I no. think it was a PSA or a commercial. Yeah. Anyway, I just had this weird flashback to watching that on TV when I was a kid. I don't think it was in a TV show. I think it was like a commercial, a commercial or safety. a PSA, and it might have been a Canadian might one too. Might have been a Canadian one. Yeah. Those are, was it traumatic? 
sort of. <laughs> well, this probably, idea that you, you that your your clothing catches fire. Probably as you're a Canadian cooking. PSA. Yeah. If anybody hasn't seen oh the, the the Canadian PSAs for safety, some of them are work safety. Brutal. They're are like they horror ju- films. Are they just work safety ones? Uh, they're they're different kinds, but it's um. Uh, the one where it's oh. boiling boiling water or boiling oil. Yeah, the woman who's working in a kitchen. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> it's so brutal. And anyway. She, she's carrying this big pot of oil or water. And, and it, she, it just implies that... She slips it, on the floor. That she slips on the floor and it... She and dumps she, the whole thing on her. But that's implied. Yeah. It, you don't see it, it happen. It just freezes before it happens or it stops. Horrific. And it is horrific. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it actually was on the air for very, very long. No, people were like, oh. <laughs> this is horrible. This is horrifying. Yeah. Please, no. So anybody wants to see some really crazy PSAs yeah. for safety, look up Canadian PSAs. Um, what, was ah. the, what was the name of that line of commercials, too? Um, Toxic oh. waste scene. No, there was a word for it. It was one word. Oh, I don't know. Anyway, PSAs. Always PSAs. interesting. Yeah. I'm sure everyone has seen a German forklift safety oh, video. Oh, so funny. <laughs> it's a fake, a it, fake one fake. of that. Is it? And it just escalates. It starts off normal. Okay. It's like, oh, okay, this is a normal PSA about forklifts. Yeah. And then it gets weirder and crazier yeah. and more violent until it just becomes like a horror film almost at the end where it just forgoes anything to do with PSAs. It's really well done. Yeah. Sierra now says the Australia oh, road safety God. PSAs are quite blunt as well. You should check some out. Mm. Chelsea Noni Mal, the workplace eye protection warning. Guy hammering on a spike and a flake of metal flies off in ah. slow motion right at the camera. Ah. Yeah. Ah, new ship. Yes. Don't die. Oh. Oof. Oh, back to two. Yeah. Can you get three, uh, three ships? I'm, I'm guessing you can. Like, if you're giving an extra ship. I would think you'd go up to three. So what is the maximum number of ships if somebody's an ex- extremely good player? Because I have two, but if Carl I didn't says, die... yep. <laughs> if I didn't die, I could have had three. Yeah. So does it go up to five, ten, the whole screen? Unlimited, overflow, 256. <laughs> Obviously, you can't get 256. 32 levels when it's done. 20,000, exactly. So if I die right now, it'd be another weird score. <laughs> no, the bosses. No, I don't need bosses and normal guys. I think it's four or five, says uh, Carl. Okay. Yeah. 8 Bit Poet says, Did you ever watch Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared? No, I don't know that one. No. Is, it, is that a movie? Is that like a horror film? Where, Sounds or... like a kid's PSA. It does. <laughs> like Danger, Stranger Danger. Could be one of those. Sounds like something that Red Letter Media would watch. Yeah. The Captain wheel, Classic wheel the says, worst. The Don't Sue Us videos don't sue you have to watch before getting your wisdom teeth removed. What? I'd be laughing out loud. What? I've never seen one of those. I don't think the dental assistants understood what was so funny. <laughs> 8-Bit Poet says, YouTube series, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared. Okay. Oh, okay. Very trippy. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I have. You I have? Ha- they're puppets, right? Are they puppets? Very trippy. I only saw some of it. Oh, that? Ah, I can't get it. Oh, ah. I hate that. Are they confirming it's a puppet series? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yep. It's super, super weird and trippy. Uh. Ah, got one. One shot on it. Yay! 23,000! <gasps> I'm flying off! I'm to the next next episode! Mm. Yay, I made it! Captain, we have sustained heavy losses. Some of our pilots have ejected into pods. Can you rescue them before they're lost? I will try. This you just should... dodge and Hope. don't go for it if you can't get it. You don't have to get it. Uh, ah, there's a room? lot of needle ah, threading. Ah. Move! <laughs> There's a lot of needle threading here. Yeah, it's just points, right? So I'm not going to be chastised if I don't get all these pods. Oh, 
There are all the complications that can occur after getting the surgery. It made me wonder why people get them removed at all. Yeah. Well, if you don't need them out, I don't get I just keep laughing out. as the symptoms got worse. No smell, loss of feeling, broke out laughing at death. What? <laughs> death. <laughs> no. Death. Ha ha ha. So how many levels are there after this? What level is this, uh, Carl? And um, well, I can determine it from that. So there's 16 in this version. I'm glad I was able to make level it Level 9? This is level 9? Okay. Yeah. So there are seven, seven? more levels. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 23. Ooh, your score is very high. Yep. Very high. Yay, I made it. Now I will die. Oh, now you can see that it's very oh, visible, it's the score. Oh my god, they're so fast. Oh, this is the level you um, it's so fast. went to. Yeah, I know. Set it to. Oh. oh, and they shoot so much. There are so many daggers coming down. I gotta play defensively now. Oh yeah, you gotta stay alive. That's what it all comes down to in the end. Come on. Gotta ah, stay ah. alive. I'm shooting two when I should shoot one and then line up the second one. Oh, God. Bastard. Yeah, more deliberate. It's hard because you just want to go smash, 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 smash. There. Yeah, yeah there, we, there go. we go. Okay, next one. Oh, they're so fast. This is like the fast waves. It's like this first levels. Yeah. Oh, my God, except they shoot a lot more. Ah, I've already got you can, yeah. Ah, I couldn't get that. I wanted it really bad because yeah. I want fast shot. I don't know how I've survived this long with slow shot. Well, it is, is that what two it is. Lives? Oh my god, that's good. Job. Oh, that's good. I've got the hang of this game now, maybe. As I die twice in a row. Because that's what happens when you say that. Never ever say you're doing well in a no, game. No. Ever. It's how you die. Never show hope nope. when you're playing vi video Always. games. Oh, bosses! <gasps> this is this oh. these are the ones. Whoa! Oh, whoa! 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 I saw, whoa, whoa, I saw whoa. the video of this. Oh, oh no, my four. gosh! Ah! Oh. <laughs> you almost okay. panicked! No! Oh. oh my gosh, they're yes. awesome! Oh wow! Oh no! 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 Nope. No. Oh. Ah. What? <laughs> so mean! Carl, How many times why? you have to hit them? This is terrible. This is so hard. Oh, oh he's now gray, he's finally. gray. Oh. Ah. Well, no. that's the end of me. Oh, wow. Pro There's a pattern there. Thank you, Double Down. Pro tip. Oh, <laughs> oh my God. That, that wow. is, that's really hard. <laughs> you have, like, you don't only have to memorize the pattern, but you... I you mean, need to is, know where to be when they when they start pattern, clashing. But I mean, it's one of those things when you get to the boss. Insert coin. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You're like, okay, I have to play for 20 minutes. Yep. Just to barely get a part of the uh, pattern. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. And then play again for 20 minutes, and then get another part of the pattern. Yep. 20 minutes again. Yeah. Well, you just have to become the expert at all the lower levels before you can move on to the next level. Yeah. Yep. Okay, we're yeah. gonna hey, bitch, shut up and take my quarters. We're gonna start from. Oh yes, yeah, that's a good idea. S. Ramirez, oh my, those bosses oh. are great. Yes, thank you for subscribing, S. Ramirez. Thank you for subscribing. We appreciate it. The cats appreciate it. They're here. They're fluffy. Okay, I'm gonna play. They this really again. want treats, by the way. They do. But we'll we'll get another round in. I'm gonna make it. it I'm gonna really try. Oh my oh, god. Oh, you have to be careful. Yeah. I've I've killed play, myself running directly into a boulder I thought I could play. get get past. So. True, 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 true. Does nothing. The Does lasers, nothing. they do nothing. Ah. Thread it ah, oh, oh, I know, pixel it's perfect. pixel perfect. At least the hitbox is exactly the ship. Oh, I don't like being here. Nope. There you go. One pixel away from death. Yep. It's the metal band that we're going to start. Yeah. Pixel away from... That's definitely going to be my new handle. Chip metal. Something. Chip metal. Chip That's metal? the new genre. Chip metal? Yep. Nice. It's got chip tunes with heavy guitars on top and nice. drums. And drums? Yeah. Nice. And Any bonus called, for getting all the pods? And it's Good gonna question. It's going to be called Pixel Away from Death. Uh, 
one pixel, one pixel away, away from, from death. death. I like it. Just like that band called Three Inches of Blood. I think it's called. Such a great name. I haven't listened to them, but I, yeah. I, I know the name's going really good. Master Boot Record. Oh, nice. That's a yeah, great band. That's a good that band must name. be a name that's of a someone. tune band. Oh, that's such a good name. Yeah. It, it's impossible that somebody hasn't taken them. Yeah, it's one wave then two waves, but they come so fast. Once you hit the two waves, it's like so hard. I need this super fast. Power. Look it up. Okay, I will. Master Boot Record. Because okay. we do try and go to the um, chiptune concerts when we're at PRG or Vancouver Retro Gaming Expo. And yeah. Sometimes there's concerts that they just, you know, have on their own. And we've gone to a number of those. This one, this level is so mega hard. So many of them, too come many. They so fast. They come in so fast. And then there's so many bullets raining down. To kind of chip away at the edges. Yeah. yeah. And work 100%. your way into the center. Thank you. Master Control Program. <laughs> Not as good as Master Boot Record. Master Boot Record. Whoa. Oh, no. Bad. Bad shit. That won't do anything. <gasps> you caught oh, two of them? Oh my god. Oh my god, you go past them. Oh my god, that was so perfectly timed. Oh my god. Because there's four of them. How do you like that, Carl? Yeah. How's that for randomness? <laughs> or the other group, Fat Table. Fat Table. <laughs> Nostalgic That's... says that was lucky. Carl says, boom. Boom. <laughs> That was probably one of the luckiest non-repeatable things that ever happened in this game. <laughs> Second boss level <laughs> says BBG. <laughs> I don't know if you want to fix that or it's... No, no, no. It's, that's so random, right? It's so random and yeah. so rare that it's so cool that, that it so happened. That so good. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's great. Fat table is like ATM machine. Duplicate ATM the last machine. word twice. Fat. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, please. Ah! ah no, you just, it's just pr self-protection. Too many, yeah. too many. Dodge, ah. dodge, dodge. Ah. At least they're all down one side. You can ah. kind of... S ah, can't get in there. I know that's part of the problem, too. Oh, can I get one? Nope. Ah! Oh, oh you got, got one! Some. Okay. If I had faster movement or faster bullets, this yeah. would be a lot better. S. Ramirez says, have to rewatch the video for that tip. <laughs> but there is no, it's random. Yeah, I think, like, yeah. You're not I think gonna... you just got super lucky there. Yeah, the last thing wow. was destroy four flying creatures. Yeah. And there happened to be four flying bosses. And it was the last thing I picked up. And I picked it up. up just as they came on the screen. Just as they came on the screen. And two of them weren't even on the screen, but it still counted. Die, 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 die. Nostalgic says, uh, is there an upper limit to the number of enemies and or bullets that can be falling at one time? And Carl says, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a lot. <laughs> Clearly it's a lot. It is quite, a, it's enough to handle. I wouldn't want more than that. It's more than enough. so fast, these, these guys. I've got the speed up now, so. Wow. Whew. They're going to be dropping, oh, dropping bombs Oh, so now. much, so much. Can't do anything. I don't have the fast bullet though, so. It's gonna be hard. Oh my no, god! No, 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 I'm dead. I'm so dead. <laughs> One life left. Oh, 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 oh. Get out there. Shoot, 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 shoot. I need a power up. That would be very nice. Oh, oh no! I was gonna die if I got that. I know, I know, I know. Defensive. Good, got that guy. <laughs> Nostalgic, I deserve that answer. <laughs> uh, oh, I can't get in there. Uh, it is hard. Oh, and what? Then, and then you thread right between them. Uh, <laughs> well, I get lucky and then I get unlucky. Cat, Prevent you'll get cat. them eventually after this game, okay? Prevent that cat. Come on. Come on. Oh, oh, come on! <laughs> oh, no. If that was my aim, then if it was my goal yum, to do that. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, it's okay. trade time, but we'll do it at, at the end of this. I have no lives left. Thank you, Gamma Dev. That's Thank awesome. Gamma Dev. Yeah. Cats are happy about that. The cats are super excited. They're very engaged. They're very, very engaged, engaged right now. Oh, come on. 
Yes, I know. I know. It's coming. I'm, it's coming. It's coming. Now they're gonna be. Oh my God! So many bullets. Yeah. It's whiny uh, sprite time. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to get in there. There we go. Oh, I got one. Oh, I got another one. Two more to go. Got another one. One more to go. Where is he? Ah, where's my bullets? Is he right there? Die! Yeah! <sighs> Next oh, oh, boss! Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Don't oh, fire boy. lasers, Wait. boss. Please don't Party fire lasers. Time. Catnip! Party time. Catnip oh, first. okay. I'm going to put catnip down some first. catnip, Gamadev. We'll catnip just first. Give you guys a little bit of this. A little bit, a little bit down. Did I make it to the last level? Here we go, catnip for you. I think they want treats though. What do I have to shoot? Do I have to shoot? No, no, there's catnip. Catnip. They're like, no, it was ding 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 tree time. We don't want catnip. <laughs> we don't want catnip. Here. We deserve other things. Here you go, sniff the catnip. Oh, he's looking. They're looking at me because I got the bells oh, down now. Oh no. Okay, we might have to give them some more after. Welcome to the next level. Someone's trying to game the system. Okay, <laughs> stay away from that. Oh, now it's backing up. Ooh, interesting pattern, movement. Ooh. Oh, he's he's damaged. I've taken. Oh, he's getting damaged. Oh, he's <gasps> firing. This is. Oh! Is... <gasps> Did I do it? Did I win the game? Nope. 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 I didn't. Oh, maybe I did. Maybe I Start just fire at nothing now. Did I win it? Carl? Yep, that, yes! that is game end for the demo. I didn't, I didn't legitimately do it because I started. You did, you restart. But you wanted to show these levels, so but that was good. I yeah. did make it to that with two yes, lives on the other game. Not like me when I cheated. So <laughs> technically, <laughs> so. I could have made it. Yeah. Yes, excellent. Oh my god. Okay. Oh my god. That. That is exactly the right amount of difficulty. Although those those laser bosses, oh my god, those laser bosses are super brutal. Yeah. Super brutal. Okay. Okay. Let's get to some treat time. So the cats are anxious. I've put some catnip down. They are ignoring it. We'll try to give them a little bit after, maybe, because they yeah. they just want treats right now. So thank you. Um. Thank you, Gamma Dev, for yeah. treat time, and thank you, Chow Sonny Mao, for catnip. We'll give them a little bit more at the end. Nice. So let's start up the bedding. Nice. Ooh, those are called Corvettes. Nice. Chitlala now wants a Lynx. <laughs> oh, Lynxes are awesome. There's yeah. so many great. Uh, there's so many great homebrew out right now for, for Lynx, the Lynx, and lots of great homebrew development yeah. as well. Um, so. And there's lots of mods as well that have extra outputs and um, controller options yep. like I'm using an arcade stick okay so we've got the cat bedding going so pick your cat yep it's prediction time this find that predict button on your mobile app or on your computer this is Atari yeah we got two cats who are in competition for treats and it's the the first to ten treats yep wins and there's over under there's over under so you can bet uh, by one or two points or by three plus points on either cat. <laughs> uh, Sprite is is usually very good yes. at getting the treats. Yes. He slows him down when he has catnip, but unfortunately the treat time was triggered before catnip and they're now like, we don't want catnip. Yeah. So Sprite is a slight advantage. I would say Sprite has the advantage most yep. of the time. Most of the time. Occasionally but... Atari will win. Yeah. But that's why we do the over under so yep. you can kind of gauge where you think they're each at. Or you can go for an outlier and clean up. Yeah, because sometimes Atari does it with three treats and uh, you will win a lot of points. Yeah, that's, that's right. Puss and bets time. So, Puss and bets. <laughs> Esther Mears needs a preview edition version too. <laughs> well, you have to go to Jagfest and there win that one copy. That one copy, <laughs> yes. It is available. Nice. All right, so we I see the majority on Atari 1 to 2. Lots of faith in Atari. Oh, button but, for the laser pointer. I oh. bought a new laser pointer today. It came today. Yes. He loves it. Oh, so. you've tried it out already? Yes. Oh, so, we'll have to demo it on the show. There is an After Dark today. Is there? Yes. Oh, okay. Unannounced, because it's the last, it's, it's one game. 
It's egg egg savior. Okay. Uh, it's for high score competition. Predict it, oh, prediction done. is done now. So we could do so the laser in the after. No, there's uh, an, a spread. There's a spread. It's a spread across you, all the categories. And, and if you didn't go okay. this time, you want to try it next time. You don't have to bet a ton of points. It's just your your um, stream points. Yep. And uh, you can bet ten if you want. Oh, oh have a good night, Carl. Good night, Thank Carl. you for joining us. You should watch the cats though. Before you go, if you, if you have not seen this, <laughs> yes. this is something funny. Okay. Okay, ready, cats? Are you ready to go? Okay. Who's first? All right. Go! Okay, they're off. They're timid. Nope. Oh, oh. that was Sprite. That was Sprite. Sprite's got one point. That was no, Atari. Atari, slight, soft ring. They're now tied up. Sprite's back Sprite? to his bell. He's 2 1. And Atari's trying to tie it up. He's being very soft. There He's got go. it. It is 2-2. Two, two. Sprite's back to his bell. He's doing There's the soft. Sprite. He's in the lead, just barely. Sprite's at winning with three. Tari's back to his bell. He's not ringing it. He's trying. Oh, oh Sprite. Sprite pulls ahead. It's now 4-2. Oh, four, Atari. 4-3. Four, <laughs> 4-3. Three. Three. He's in the lead. I don't know if Atari can catch up. He's Oh, Sprite's trying to dig it out. If Atari, Atari. can get back to his bell and ding it, he could tie it up here. Harder, harder, come on, you can do it. Harder, there, there you, go. you go. Atari has tied it up, Sprite is still digging it out. No, he has eaten it, he's got it. He's back to his bell. He's taking his time. Oh, he's ring it. Come on, Atari, get back in the game. Come on, no, ring it, come on. Go. There, there you, you go. go, five, five, tied up. It's a nail biter. Sprite is just a bit ahead by timing and he's got Six points now. He's getting closer to nine. Oh, good Strong ring. Strong ring from Atari. Strong ring, Atari. Good, good That ring. was a good, good ring. He might be back in the game if he can get oh. back to his bell. Sprite nope. loves to soft paw it. Yeah, that's a disadvantage. There you go. Seven, seven. My this goodness. is a I'm paw gonna, biter. I need a few more treats here. We're getting close. Oh, and he's batted it away. He's, he's taking his time. Atari, get back in the game. Get your head in the game. There you go. Ring it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh. There we go. Atari got it. Oh, Sprite. Sprite. Neck and it neck. It is neck and neck. Atari neck is slightly neck. ahead. Oh, he's back to his bell. <gasps> Get it. Come on. Hit it. Hit it. Harder. There, there you go. go. Atari is ahead. He's at game point. He's distracting Sprite with his eating. Sprite's looking oh. around. It is any cat's game. It's any nine, cat who nine. gets their first oh Atari. Oh, my God. What an upset. Woo, Atari cat. Wow. No catnip advantage. <laughs> Wow. That is a, wow, that's and amazing. And again, Erlen is not in the room. That's right. So there Erlen's you go. not here to see it. Therefore, <laughs> oh, Atari wins. Kitties. Good job. Good kitties. I just need to wash my hands. So let's this. see who won the big pot here. So it was Atari by one point. And person who won was Captain Classic. <laughs> Two and a half Good thousand job. channel points. Nice. And he shares it with Proud. Nice. Captain Classic is the big winner. Smart bet on Atari. I Atari know. won without catnip. Yeah. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Now you can go. <laughs> Carl, <laughs> Carl, after you've seen that. <laughs> uh, I don't know if you'd seen that before. It's just something funny we do. Yeah. Uh, but now they get catnip as a reward if yes. they want it. I don't know if they want it. Yeah. Did you already put it down? I put some down, but we can put a little bit more down. Yeah. Here. Um, thank you, uh, Chalcedony Mao. Thank you yeah. very much. All um, right. Yeah, we're going to take a little break, probably about an hour. Oh, really? Okay. Um, well, I get things ready for the after dark. Okay. Um, but we will be playing. Let me just look it up because it is literally the last day to play this. Oh, um, competition? Yeah. Somebody reminded me, J G the long name, <laughs> <laughs> J G K S P S X. Uh, we're going to continue with the Lynx. It is a game on the Lynx. Oh, perfect. Um, and he holds the Atari Lynx High Score Club. And this month or this round is Egg Sevier's Crackleberry Rescue 2020. Okay. It is a homebrew. Nice. Um, it is paired with Packland, but we're not playing Packland. Okay. We just play homebrews. Fair enough. Fair enough. On this. Um, so I have to get that prepared, get it loaded, get the screen ready, mm -hmm. see what the high scores are so we know what to um, what to beat. 
And uh, let's take a look at what's coming up on the show. Do, do, do. And it's not much because I don't have next show prepared. Okay. Could be anything. Anything. Anyone's game? Yeah, yeah could be any console. We'll see. We'll see what I need to catch up on. But then we have a short break. Um, and then we're back uh, on the 17th. So the next okay. show is the last one for two weeks. About two weeks mm. off run. Um, but after that, on the 21st, coming up uh, just less than a month, three weeks, we're going to be start playing through all the classic Atari 7800 games. Nice. Starting on the 21st, which is a show day. So that's going to be a late day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I might do a light day for the 21st. Like okay. Play one big game yeah, or a couple small games. And then we're going to be playing... Oh, Chitlala's birthday Yay. on the 21st. Happy upcoming birthday. We'll be playing twenty, the first 20 released games for the 7800. Hey, Oh, Render thank Ghost. you for subscribing, Yay. Render Ghost. 37 months. Hooray, Atari. Yep. Oh, celebrations. Yes. <laughs> um, and then we'll be playing three sessions of After Dark. Mm -hmm. uh, after that. Don't know what the dates are yet. I'll figure that out. But the first one is on the 21st, because that was the release date in 1984. Okay. In select areas of Los Angeles. Yep. And then they pulled it <laughs> and then for they... two years. Yes. Yep. Starting with pole position pack-in game. It would be. Yeah. It would be the pack-in. First one. If, if pole position was released in 84, because there was a handful of games that have the 1984 number uh oh, year on it i see okay and those were the first the first games yes. so pole position was one of the first games and not a released game in 86 as the packing game mm -hmm. i'll have to do some research on that but don't know um and ne not sure about 84 yeah because you can actually find 80 like special cartridges that were the original ones really? released in 84. Yeah, very rare. Mm. Um, also in uh, May, we have The Secret Homebrew from Champ Games. Ooh, exciting. I don't know what it is. That's very exciting. I saw something the other day. That gave you a... Th that gave me maybe a hint. Oh. I, I hope it's this. Yeah. But I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite possible... It would be very cool. Yeah. But I don't I don't think it is because I don't think that game needs to be really re released. But it's Champ Games, so I will definitely take a Champ Games version of that You're game. You're being very cryptic, so well, like I don't want to give it away. <laughs> I, I don't want to I don't want to You don't want to start up. guessing, right? Yeah. 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 Because I don't want to spoil anything. No, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it is one of my favorite games. Yeah. I okay. really love this game. Okay. Um, we're also going to have a developer spotlight in June on Steve Engelhart uh, with an exclusive world premiere. And that will not be to be announced. It might be a secret homebrew, actually. Mm. Oh, look at that sniffy look at guy. That, he's sniffing the air. Oh, that's so cute. Can I get that on screen? Oh, it's too late now. Oh, is he still doing it? He's sniffing. Do you see him sniffing? What are you doing, buddy? Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Where are, you, are you sniffing You're, for treats? Oh, like, that's there are treats adorable. In the air. Um, and then later in the year, I don't know when, we're going to do a developer spotlight on Large Stavely, probably coinciding with Jumping in Shadows. Yeah. That would be a good uh, pair up. Um, also, developer spotlight on Chris Walton, hopefully a Xevious pair up. Mm -hmm. Those might be near PRGE, maybe? Because they might. I'm pretty sure. Reboot wants to release Jumping in Shadows at PRG, and I'm sure Chris Walton would want to release Xevious as well. Um, but lots of cool things coming up on the show. So huge, huge, huge thank you. Sarah now says, yep, working on it as I type this. <laughs> Excellent. A uh, huge thank you to Carl Forehand. Yes. From Songbird Productions. Wonderful, yeah. It was uh, an absolute joy to talk to him again mm -hmm. and talk to him for the first time on the show. Mm -hmm. um, I'll definitely, we'll definitely be stopping by his booth. Oh, for sure. At PRG yeah. and talking to him about all his new games yeah. that have come out for the Lynx and the Jaguar. 
as well as everyone else at PRG as well. It'll be so much fun. I love, 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 love mm. PRGE. It's a highlight of our year, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. And it's a nice trip to Portland. Too. It is. Yeah. yeah. I love going down there. Love all the food. Yep. Oh, nice little so break. Lots Meet, of video meeting games. all the people. Yes. All the people that we talk to all the time. Yeah. All you guys out there. Yeah. Um, so if you've never been to PRG and you have time yeah. and or money to have a trip to Portland, it is the mecca <laughs> of homebrew games. Yeah. Um, at least in North America, yeah. if not the world. Yeah. Um, Atari Age has a massive booth. Yeah. There's Songbird there. There's everyone is there. Yeah. Yep. All yep. the big distributors and publishers are no. there. Um, it yeah, is special. Says it is Ramirez. super it is special. special. It's like massively awesome. I would love to go to the Midwest Gaming Classic that at some good. point I because that was, sounds fantastic too. I I've didn't heard know it was that big. And then the one in Austin as well mm -hmm. is the other one that people talk a lot about. Nice to branch out. Yeah. At some point, mm -hmm. check out some of these other places. Maybe they'll invite but, us one, yeah. one year. Uh, they'll pay for us to go there. Yeah, no. yeah. I'm not holding my breath, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, Don't know we're uh, that big of celebrities yet. No. <laughs> or ever. No. <laughs> but, but that's okay. We'll see. Uh, it would be worth just the trip, I think. Yeah. To go and try to go to, to those yeah. places. I've never been it's, to it's a nice, Austin. It's a nice change. Of, I've never been to Austin. No, I haven't. No. I've never been to Texas. I've been to Texas. Oh, you, you've been to Houston, right? Houston. Yeah, I've never been Houston to Houston. Houston was great. And I've yeah. heard Austin's awesome too. I have too. So, yeah. Yeah. And where's Midwest uh, Gaming Classic MGC? Did He did say, right? Or maybe he didn't say. I think it's near him. Uh, can somebody yeah, let us know where that yeah. is? In the Midwest. In the Midwest. <laughs> yeah, it'll, it'll take us to places we've never been, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah. Milwaukee. Uh, Milwaukee. There I, we go. Oh, we can visit Red Letter Media. No. There you go. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just don't. don't come to Texas in summer. I oof, have heard it's oof. rather hot. I had a friend who was, um, um, uh, well, she's a doctor, but she did a residency in, I can't remember, was she in Austin? I can't remember now. Mm. Um, but uh, she used to bike into work. In the summer? <laughs> All year round, but she'd get up at like four in the morning to do it. It's a dry heat. Like she'd get up really early yeah. and work a really early day. Mm, okay. But I just thought she was nuts. Like, what are you doing if in it, the summer? If it's a dry heat, that's that's fine. Like when we get hot here, yeah. it's it's literally deadly. Almost. Oh, it's like humid. When it's super hot It here. depends on where you are. It doesn't yeah. get that hot here, but like in the middle of the country, it gets really humid. So. Well, yeah, yeah. in the interior... In the, in the province, the middle of the province. Yeah. Well, yeah. oh, I was going to say in Ontario, where I grew up, Ontario. it gets really humid. the middle. Too. Hum humidity. <laughs> well, more That's towards the, the middle than we they are. They think so, they're the middle. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, so thanks yeah. for hanging out with us. Uh, it was super fun uh, show. The game is absolutely brilliant. Mm -hmm. um, what to add to it to make it better? Nothing. More. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more of it. More levels, which he's adding in. Yep. 16 more levels. So if it's more of the same, uh, I'm all for it. Um, maybe a power-up that is a shield, like a one-hit shield. Mm -hmm. That would be a nice power-up. Mm -hmm. I like the invincibility shield. I didn't know his invincibility till later. Well, then once you realize... Then you're like, shoot, shoot yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah. Shoot it. Get, <laughs> Get right it in all there. Now. <laughs> um, but just like a one-off shield. Like yeah. you get hit once and it goes away. Maybe he has plans for that already, mm. um, but that would be a good power up. He's got a speed up. He's got a fast shot. He's got to destroy four things on the screen. Those are all great power ups. Um, I think somebody asked him to add more bullets, and he said, "No, that's not going to happen." Um, but faster bullets are pretty much just as good as more bullets because mm. you get more bullets. That it's perfect. It's great. It looks good. It sounds great. You really it sounds enjoy good. playing it. I really enjoy oh, playing it. Oh, I love it. shooters. It's really fun. And to have another great shooter on the links. Yep. Um, Odin Nexus is another amazing mm -hmm, shooter. Mm -hmm. um, that if you're looking for shooters, they're adding. Now there's more. There's going to be another one. That's awesome. Um, really, really good. Yeah. So thanks for hanging out with us. S Ramirez, Double Down, Chitlet Law, Cyrano Reboot, Rendered Ghost. Vitoko, uh, Charles Dunnymau, Prow7, Songbird Pro, thank you, Yay, Carl. Thank you. Uh, ABD Official. Um, who else? Nostalgic. Um, 8 Bit Poets. Dan AVC. It's Kev. Hi, Kev. Hey, Kev. 
Um, who else? Who else? So, same people. JGKSPSX will be playing the game for the competition in about an hour. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. Ivory Tower Collections. And that's the end of the screen. And everybody else yeah. who is lurking. Thank um, you for joining us today. Yes. Great, great game. Great oh game. Oh my God. Awesome. It's a perfect game. Yeah. <laughs> perfect game for me too. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll be handing you off to somebody. Let's see if uh, your Atari Beer Pong is uh, broadcasting right now. Polygox says, I saw the entire show, but I was quietly working. <laughs> oh, hey, Polygox. Yay. Uh, Atari Beer, Beer Pong is broadcasting. Yes. So we're going to hand you off to them. But um, keep watching for a pop up for us in about an in hour. About an hour, yeah. And we'll be probably playing for, it depends how long yeah. um, it goes for. It's probably not going to be super long, maybe yeah. an hour max. Okay. Um, so we need to raid. I always forget. I always think I'm like joining it, but no, let's not do that. Atari Beer Pong. And he usually plays Atari. Uh, yeah. Games, usually Atari ST. Our Atari ST. Yeah. yeah. But he's an awesome, awesome guy. Um, so that's it for us. Yes. Um, so we'll be handing you off and uh, see you in about an hour if you're still up. So we'll see you soon. Yes. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.